This episode is brought to you by Harry's Razors and also Mac Weldon. Two great brands. Two great brands, two great prices. Uh, different prices, sub prices within each brand because there's a variety of goods and services Do you think available. this is too much detail for a, for a pre-roll? <laughs> yeah. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Oh my God, it's the Weekly Planet. That's right, Mason. I'm doing it again. I like it now. This is the show where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me as always, my co-host, Nick Mason. Is it, though, going to offend the, the hardline purists? atheists mm. of, of, of our listeners? Oh, yeah, right. Because I said, oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I guess you could take it as a religious experience or a uh, figure of speech. That's true, yeah. It can yeah. be interpreted as whichever way you feel comfortable with. Could you open with that then instead? Oh my God, it's the Weekly Planet. <laughs> which can be taken. Which can be taken as a religious belief or a figure of speech. <laughs> okay, I'll do that next week. Okay, yeah. Great. Uh, it's a big news week this week, Mason. Oh, yes. Uh, it's all news and maybe some bloody hate mail thrown in for good, <laughs> oh, hello. For good measure, which I normally Very don't give good. that away up top, but that'll that'll be coming down okay. the line a bit. All it's, Newsweek, or as we like to call it, killing some time before Captain Marvel comes out next week. Well, there is so much news. There is though. a lot of news. Yeah, because yeah. I was because we talked about doing a topic, but we would we just half ass a topic. Like we wouldn't have enough time. <laughs> exactly. No but one we're would be happy. Ask this news. Let we're me gonna, tell you. Absolutely, we are. There's yeah. so much news. Uh, first one is from about the DC slate, the future of the DC universe, the mm. DC universe. Mason. No, it's, it's two dick. It's the two dick universe. That's right. We forgot the worlds yeah. of DC. Correct. Uh, or it isn't called that also, maybe? Oh, yeah, yeah, Well, they only just... Because that's the thing. We went years without knowing... Everybody called it the DC extended. They don't want to name it. You yeah. don't want to name it. <laughs> that's right. It started in 2013. Yeah. It's been six years. Don't, yeah, come on. Give us something. <laughs> and it, sorry, go yeah. on. Just call, it the, just call it DC Universe. That would have been fine. But they've, they've only just called it the worlds of DC, and now they're like, you know, we're not going to have one anymore. I don't even know if it was officially called that or somebody just said in an interview or something like, well, in the worlds of DC. And yeah, then that right, was right. Good. Uh-huh. Oh, God. Anyway. Because there's been no banner or anything like that. Nothing so. at all. Yeah. There's just that weird CGI introduction with a whole lot of characters we'll never see. Uh, Kevin Sujihara, which is the, who's the head of Warner Brothers, he's yes. talking about the future of the the two dick universe slate. Mm-hmm. Uh, the universe isn't as connected as we thought it was going to be five years ago. That is true. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see m- much more focus on individual experiences around indiv- individual characters. That's not to say we won't at some point come back to the notion of a more connected universe, but it feels like the right strategy for us right now. In other words. Let's just do what Marvel did. Yeah, right. Now. Uh-huh. Look, we tried a different thing and we botched it. Yeah. I think it could have worked. I also think that. But it didn't, for the most part. <laughs> Mostly didn't work. <laughs> yeah. But for a few, again, for a few hardline people, it absolutely worked That's and every, right. every movie was genius. But so. even then, I think there's, I don't think anybody, if you're hardline, Man of Steel, Suicide Squad, Batman v Superman, you didn't like Justice League. Right. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? So I don't yeah. think everybody's happy all the way through. No, that's true. Yeah. Uh, but you know, there's some good movies in there. Some of them aren't there. Yes, there we there go. There are. Yeah. Yes, I'll freely admit it. But what do you? So, so that this isn't a surprise. I mean, just looking at the upcoming movie slate, which ones are real and which ones aren't? Who knows at this point? <laughs> yes, it does look like different universes, different, you know, weirder characters, and they got they're going the trench. for the trench, etc. Again, what if it just becomes an all trench? This they they're like the money spinner is whatever's happening in the trench. <laughs> yes. Marvel, you can do your interconnected universes and your end games and whatever. Mm. We're just going to figure out what's down there in the trench. What about a sitcom set in the trench? I love what that. about a rom com set in the trench? Ro- trench rom com. I want a prequel story to the fish monster that Nicole Kidman gutted and then wore as a fish costume. Yeah, right. Exactly. Where, where's he from? That's right. Did he have a family? Almost certainly. Mm. They're yep. still waiting for him. Oh. Maybe Nicole Kidman rolls in one day and they're like, Dad's home. Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> Yeah. You're all next, kids. I need some slippers. <laughs> so, yeah, that's not a surprise, but it seems like they. This course correction looks like it's working. Financially, at the very least, because Aquaman. Aquaman did, did very well. People yeah. like Joker and, you know, Suicide Squad, etc. is happening. Mm-hmm. But uh, Patty Jenkins. Oh, it also mentions that what Patty Jenkins did with on Wonder Woman il- illustrated to us that you could do these characters that are not Batman and Superman. And obviously, we want to get those two in the right place and we want strong movies around Batman and Superman. So that doesn't rule out a Superman movie. 
then we'll never see it, maybe. <laughs> or we will see. I don't know what's happening. What's happening, Mason? Are we ever going to get a Superman movie? You would. I would love a good Superman movie. I was going to say you would love a good Superman movie, but I would just also love... Just me. Exclusively me in yeah. the world. Yeah. I don't know. Has, has, Superman, has Superman gone the way of, yeah, the shadows, yeah, the phantoms? Mm. I think there is definitely a perception of that. I think so, But I yeah. think if you made a good one... I agree. People, people would go, you know what? This is more... Home Alone yeah. than The Shadow. I'm I thinking th- of big early 90s hits and misses, Mason. <laughs> oh, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they just need to... I think what they need to do is they need to throw him on the other side of the galaxy yeah. where it's him versus, like, Mongol and Dark Side and people to whom he's not even on equal footing with. He, yeah. is, he is the small fish kind of thing. Yes. Like, you scale the whole thing up, yeah. you know, where human beings are just a speck yeah. and he's like... You know, he's struggling. Yeah. I think that would be more fun. He's ST Ruglin, mate. Yeah, he's ST... What? Is that a thing? That's an expression. It's not. Me. It is absolutely, absolutely not. Just don't you worry about it, okay? Right, Listen, right. you can Google Did it. Did you yeah. learn that from your friend Ads? <laughs> with a Z? <laughs> That's going to be a call forward to an ad we've already recorded. Oh, okay, right. <laughs> but yes, I Okay, did. great. Yeah. You really don't listen to this show, do you? No! <laughs> The ads go in the middle now. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. handy. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, so I think, you know, because Wonder Woman and Aquaman, the most successful films from theirs, mm. like critically and commercially, they're not mainstream characters. I know people say, well, that command's technically could be around a Wonder Woman. Yeah, but Wonder Woman hasn't had a, 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 didn't have a movie until the Wonder Woman that's movie. That's true, you know yeah, I mean? exactly. Like in the comics, it's Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, but not in the mainstream. Mm. Before this, it wasn't. Exactly. At least, yeah. And Aquaman has been... You know the 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 most exposure people have had of Aquaman in the last thirty years has been the episode of the episodes of Entourage, correct, and the Super Friends cartoon, correct, in which every character is useless. Yeah, but considering that your only exposure to Aquaman, he's useless. Yeah, they're like, well, Aquaman as a character must be useless. That's so. right, but it turns out he's he's rad. He's rad. He's like my mate Ads. It's yeah, a yeah. call back and a call forward. <laughs> uh, That's a call straight down the line. Is you what that is. Believe it. Uh, I got some other DC news though. Justin Kroll, who's an entertainment reporter. I'm trying to name people, Mason. I'm trying to name and shame. No, <laughs> yeah, name and shame. Let's I'm stick with yeah, that. Yeah, okay, cool. Well, I mean, let's see what he has it's to say. To Maybe we people. are shaming him. Uh, he says Will Smith is out as Deadshot. Yeah, he's out of the DC universe. It's an amicable breakup. By that, do you mean amicable? What did I say? Amicable. Did I say? Which dwarf? I believe is a type of dwarf. It's a pharmacy in okay. America. Is it? Yeah. You thinking of Amcal? I'm thinking of Amcal. Mm. Mm. What happened? So, so Deadshot's out. Yes. Simpler solution: replace him with their stroke. Yeah, and then that's been cast as well, hasn't it? Exactly. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. But do you go with that weird grey wig they put him in? You yes. didn't have to make him that grey. No. He could have just been the regular Joe Manganello grey. Yeah, exactly. He's got a little bit of grey in the beard and the hair. But isn't any amount of grey too much grey? You know what I mean? I don't think it's that's true. It's an embarrassing true. amount of grey. Any amount of grey is an embarrassing, I don't think shameful that's true. amount of grey. That's gray. a definitively untrue statement, Mason. New listeners, James has grey hair. <laughs> some. Just, some grey hair. Shameful. <laughs> it, look, it's maybe it's maybe aged close to 50%. Who's to say? Yeah, right? <laughs> Do you think that your... No, I, I feel your, your hair has stayed consistently about the same level of grey for a long time. Okay, but I've got that shampoo, grey. though. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I've yeah. got that shampoo. Are you really using that? I use it occasionally, yeah. Just, okay. to, just to take the edge off, mate. Oh, you know yeah, what I mean? Sure, right. Just to be able to walk around with my head held high. Yeah. You know what I mean? I understand. I don't want the shame that you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, whatever, whatever helps you sleep at night. I understand. <laughs> I don't do it at the front yeah. so, so much oh. either, because you don't want that, do you? No. Yeah, a bit of grey in the front. I want a Mr. Sheffield situation. Sure. That's what I'm going for. Yeah. Uh-huh. Is that a reference anybody gets? Apparently, just, because... I know Duke, I want to talk about him a lot. Well, uh, Mr. Sheffield from The Nanny. The Nanny was huge in Australia. Yeah. But I guess because there's 9,000 TV channels in America, it was less popular. Yeah, it was So we're just constantly yeah. re- referencing The Nanny. <laughs> At one point, it was on like five nights a week. Well, that's I why I think it was, because it was just on all the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. I watched a lot of The Nanny. Yeah. Well, and I didn't really like it. <laughs> was it good? I don't Almost know. certainly not. Anyway, back to... <laughs> dead, dead shots out. Yeah, I think just put Deathstroke in. I think that's also great. why, I like, think of that. because they're probably not going to do a Justice League two. Th- not yet. Not yet. Maybe at some. But point. I mean, again, he he can't fight Superman. No. What's the point of him? <laughs> what's the point of him? What's the point of anything? Really? But then again, what's the point of him putting him in the Suicide Squad? Because again, they're a team that's supposed to be able to take down Superman. And most of them have like baseball bats, yeah, <laughs> and boomerangs, sort yes. of, yeah. Uh, also, as part of this story, uh, the studio execs are deciding whether they will recast the role or replace Deadshot with a different character, which is what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think? I don't think he's. 
it's not that popular or beloved a movie or beloved a character where you couldn't replace him. I agree. Yeah. I mean, he kind of had his arc. Yeah. Which was... Back in prison. <laughs> get back in the box! <laughs> That's right. I'll never get out back in the box. And I'm back in the box. Well, but you know, he had he wanted his daughter to be proud of him or whatever. And yeah. then at the end she was because he murdered a whole bunch of people and she was on board Goobly, with that. Goobly-eyed men or whatever. Men, men made of eyes. Do you remember? No. In the city, they fought googly-eyed men. They were men made of eyes. Oh. Do you remember the villains The, the mud men? Yeah. Were yeah. they mud men, were they? I think so. They were just covered in googly eyes. All right. Remember he stood on the car and he shot them? Yeah, sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. That's a good movie. Mm. But, yeah, but that's I- it. I mean, there's no, there's no more... I mean, you know, the comic book version of the character, I'm sure, has more depth. But this version, yeah. that's really it. You know? Will Smith is uh, he's kind of more, more meme than man now. How, what, what Will Smith Everything he does recently. is mocked mercilessly. He was like the coolest dude on the planet. And now with like the genie happened. Yeah. You see he was in the YouTube Rewind and he opens that. And it's very weird. Now, I, I'm not really up to speed on what YouTube Rewind is, but is it like a huge best of compilation yes. of YouTube? But it's normally a bunch of people. Like it's a lot of safe channels that a lot of people don't know. And like the people complain because where are the edgy channels that these aren't, this isn't the real YouTube and whatever. Uh-huh. And Wasn't it massively downvoted? Isn't it was the, the most downvoted video of all time wow. on YouTube. Let me, I can check that for you right now if you want. Please. Uh, but yeah, there was a massive backlash. And big part of that, it, well, not big, one of the parts of it was it opened with Will Smith. Oh, he introduces it. Yeah, I can, you, I can play it. You want to hear it? Please. Okay. So just to be clear, he's standing at a railing overlooking some mountains. Okay. And the other thing is people are like, he's on YouTube. Like he has a very successful YouTube channel. Does but he's he? also the biggest movie star in the world. So it's like, well, is that what YouTube is about? You know what I mean? What? Like Jack Black's big on it as well. But people, but he's more kind of, his videos are quite good and lo- uh-huh. they sit not low effort, but they, they feel more low budget and less polished. So he's kind of been embraced a lot What does more. Will Smith do on YouTube? This. And then there's a oh he's done yeah, it again a compilation of do you think he got paid for that uh, probably mm. so yeah that's what so Will Smith is but I think what what my point was yes was that I think this would probably be a better time for him commercially to stay on board the Suicide Squad yeah right to ride this to ride success. the suicide train exactly <laughs> to its logical endpoint sure because <laughs> uh-huh. you know James Gunn's doing it. Pro- he's probably going to make a good film. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. I mean, none of that's guaranteed, obviously. But... Sure. But I think if any director is going to give that character a bit more depth, it's probably James Gunn. Yeah, so... exactly. Or you, yeah. but you didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'll not lower myself. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. Because he just... And he's also, I, I don't Did really... he give a reason for being out? Do we know why he's out? No. Okay. But I, um, I, I haven't really watched his YouTube channel. I'm not against him. I just don't care what he's doing. Yeah, right. Ever. But he did he does tell the story about why he passed on the Matrix, and that's quite an interesting video. Ooh. That um that yeah, they kind of pitch it to him, but they pitched it really kind of like, and it's cool, and then the camera turns around and you do a kick and whatever, and he was like, I don't get this. I'm sure, not right. do it. But then uh-huh. he's also like, and I probably would have fucked it up because Keanu Reeves was really great in that role and blah, sure, blah, right. so yeah. Are these like high production value videos, or is he just is mm. he just doing it to not a like, webcam? Not like crazy high production, but yeah, there's there's clearly some money behind them and okay, he's got right. a team and whatever. Oh, Yeah, so... All right. Yeah, so there you bloody go, Mason. Yeah. Deadshot. I feel all our dads would do that if they were rich. Yeah. Like, that would all, you know, just... Tell just... you what, we should start a separate fund for our dads. Okay, I'm listening. To, just like a, like a Patreon. Make them rich. Yep. And then have them do YouTube Pater videos. Patreon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Pater. <laughs> What do you think of that though? Me, my dad, and your dad. Yep. I don't think they've ever met. I don't think they've ever met. You're right. <laughs> and we get them together. Yep. They probably have similar interests in trains or something. Look, I'm sure we can find something <laughs> yeah. that happened. Come, we'll, we'll give. You know what? We'll select a dad hobby for them, and they have to that do it. That what, what does your dad enjoy? He likes books. I know he that. He likes books. He likes photography. Does he like books about World War Two? Not really. Okay, interesting. No. That's a very dad thing, isn't, isn't it? Though, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Does he like World War Two? I don't think so. A lot of dads like World War II, Mason. Yeah, that's I'm aware. Yeah. Okay, likes photography. My dad likes a bit of it. We'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure something out. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. In more. Wait, do we have to pay them? Is that what's No, happening? no. We're raising the money through this. Oh, okay. This is a, a crowdfunded campaign. Dad experience. For our dads. Dad bonding. <laughs> I get it. Okay. All right. I'm on board with this. 
there would not be a single bit worthwhile video <laughs> produced. Yeah. Uh, the Batman... Oh, conspiracies. My dad likes conspiracies. Does he? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My dad likes conspiracies. But that would be interesting in itself, yeah. wouldn't Maybe it? Maybe that's what your dad wants my dad to think. <laughs> <laughs> it's very possible. Mm-hmm. That would be, wouldn't that be like if your dad loves conspiracies and my dad doesn't? That's right. That's, they could have, they could butt heads. Yeah. That's what, put, that's, it's, it's a bit of drama, a bit of, bit of, um, what's that thing? Hot and cold? No, the thing. Ying and Yang. No. Cheech and Chong. No, a bit of bloody. Carl and Urban. No, it's not a Toe thing Jam and a and thing. Earl. No, it's when it's a bit of. Batman and Robin. No, it's a bit of bloody. Ham and conflict. cheese. Okay. And cheese. <laughs> conflict <laughs> and cheese is what I'm thinking of. Okay. Yes. Uh, the Batman will apparently introduce at least four villains, says Forbes Mark Hughes. I'm just crediting everybody. Good, Mason. good. Well, exactly. We don't want to think we're we're bloody stealing their content, do That's we? That's right. I'm going to forget next week. I and mean, we're but doing it. We we're stealing are. their content. But we we're... definitely are. Mm. Uh, four villains. We've heard that there's going to be more rogues than ever. Yes. What do you think about that, though? Should they do Deadshot in this one or Man with a Sword and Grey Hair? What do you do? Ooh. Where do you go? How do you do it? Well, that's the thing, because I think you need... If we're going to do four, I think we need... Two that are at least two that are like physically imposing. So, so maybe like a, a death stroke. Or a bane. I was gonna say a killer croc, but they've already ruined no. that. No. Bane they've already ruined. Shark? Shark boy? A shark man? Which which bane? When I say bane, they haven't they haven't ruined bane, but bane is very fresh in, yeah. in people's memory, so But so is Batman. <laughs> I guess that's true. And they did ruin Batman with <laughs> Athlete, so <laughs> Sorry, keep going. Uh I don't know. Was like a bit... was a freeze in physically imposing enough? Yes. Yeah. I think freeze I think it's an own its own movie would be. Oh, but also this is going to be this is going to be in the past, isn't it? Or, or a young or, or a younger Batman. Okay, yeah. uh, then maybe not Deathstroke. Yeah, unless it's young Deathstroke. Jaden Smith, no. <laughs> Dead shot. Willow Smith. You're thinking of yeah, dumb thinking of yeah, could do yeah, yeah. interesting. Mm-hmm. Get Fish Mooney. You know you can cast absolutely. You know you can cast Get Mason. the woman. J- Will, Jada Smith's Pink- wife. Will Smith's wife. Will Smith's wife. The woman, Smith. correct? Yeah, that woman. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. How about how about Mister Freeze and like Blockbuster? Maybe he's say like, again. He's like a big. He's like a super imposing. Like he's uh, originally he had, was just really super strong and incredibly dumb. Mm. But then he sold his soul and he got super intelligent oh, as right. well. So he's got it all. He's got it all exactly. Excellent. That's right. Okay. They say Blockbuster can't have it all, but, but he, he can. can and he but does. he can. He can. He does. What about uh, like a um. I had a good one, and now I don't have one. Have it a mastermind? You need a mastermind. Maybe the Riddler. What about Clayface? Because you can kind of do a few with that. That's even. true. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I like that one. Mm. And can, Clayface, can Clayface be two people? I don't believe so. Yeah, I didn't think so. Either. No. Also, the, there's there's been a number of different Clayfaces yes. though. So one of them's just a guy in masks, isn't it? The f- well, the first one was like just a, a good guy actor or the, something. The first one was like a like a, a guy in a, like a mud mask, but mm. then he later stole powers off the the, yeah, the right. succeeding. Clay faces. So, so he was he was just in like something you get at a day spa with, yeah, exactly. with cucumbers it's on the eyes. eyes. Exactly. And two handguns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want to be around that guy because he's got cucumbers on his eyes. You don't know where he's gonna point those things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, so there's that. Yeah, there's I mean that we've, one. we've not had a live yeah. action clay face, I don't yeah. think. So no. he plays a big part in Arkham City. Yes. Yeah, which I quite like that aspect uh-huh. of the story. Yeah. What are Rocksteady doing? They still haven't told us. I don't know. They said it's not Superman. Which makes me think they're just doing another Batman game. All right. Anyway, I'll take it. Oh, whatever. Any more? Any more? Uh, uh look. I look. Ideally, give me, give me Penguin Riddler, uh, Mister Freeze, and Shark, Shark Tale, King Shark. Yeah. Nah. Something Prometheus, from, maybe. Something. The from reverse the... Batman. Oh yeah. What about something from the trench? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. You want to tie oh, it in? B- Batman's trench ex-wife. Yes. Sure. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Piranha Face St. Cloud. <laughs> remember her? I remember Piranha she was, Face. So- she was a high society lady, but also she's part Piranha. What happened to Silver St. Cloud? Is she dead? Or the version that uh, the widening Gaia is dead or got her throat cut? Yeah. That story never finished, did no, it? No, I think she might be back. Okay. I but feel- is that storyline, did that ever finish though? I don't know. I don't know if it did either. The Kevin Smith, the Kevin Smith pen. one, yeah. I don't know. I never thought to check. Because I know that was the final story in like the Batman Year One universe, and then they did the New Fifty Two. But now the New Fifty Two is gone. I don't know what counts. Oh, now it's that. all Kevin Smith. Yeah, it's all the, Kevin, on, yeah. the only stuff in currently canonical in the DC universe is the stuff Kevin Smith wrote about. Thank God. Yeah, he does some good stuff though. Uh, the, well, this wasn't in the news, but Jay and Silent Bob reboot has been filming as well. Yeah, yeah right. I'll get back into that universe. I haven't seen one. I'll give while. it one more. Sure. Yeah. Well, I was kind of disappointed they didn't because I don't like 
I don't even really like the Jane Silent Bob movie, but I quite like the Clerks movies. I so like I Clerks gonna, 1 and yeah, 2 a lot, yeah. Yeah, so mm-hmm. anyway. We'll see it, won't we? Yes. Both of us can and will. Can and we can and we will. Aquaman 2 has a release date. Yes. December. What yes. year? Have a guess. 2021. 20, 22. <sighs> long time out. That's That means it's four years in between Aquaman films. Does it feel too long? No, but that's just enough time for us to develop unquenchable aqua fever. I... <laughs> That's what I'm calling it. Hashtag. Thirst? Let me know. Do you no. Mean thirst? No. If you're on board, I want everybody to tweet at me at Wikipedia Brown. Hashtag unquenchable aqua fever. I'm. I don't have an unquenchable aqua fever. Not yet. For another aqua. But by 2022, movie. you're going to have hashtag unquenchable aqua fever. I think four years might be too long. No, but that's. It's enough time for your unquenchable aqua fever to dip. Yeah. There might be a trench movie yeah. that quenches your aqua fever for a bit, yeah. and then you get the then you get the you get the, the jitters again, okay. and then all of a sudden, twenty twenty two rolls around, unquenchable aqua, aqua, aqua fever. Because I remember the gap between Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises that was four years, and I'm like, this is forever. Mm. But that being said, I was kind of I wanted to see another one of those. Yeah, right. But this, I'm like, I didn't hate Aquaman, but I'm like, I yeah, right. I, I like the character, and I'll see him in other stuff. But mm. I'm not hanging out. I'm not like, oh man, that's too long away. I'm like, it just seems like I'll forget. <laughs> mm. Maybe that's going to be the new tagline. I guess the trench will carry us over, though. That's what I'm saying. Because he's supposed to be in it anyway now, isn't he? That's the rumor. That's what I'm saying. It actually makes sense. Aquafina. So we've got a little a little sip in the middle. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Just a little bit of aqua. For the, for a, to quench that aqua. Okay, I, did you say that actually? Yes. I, did, I, did you say that to me and I missed it? Yes. I'm, well, I'm sorry. No, I've been away. Right. People don't know this. You've had a big weekend with the boys, boys. or something. My yeah. mate Ads was there. I oh, don't yeah, know what I called Ads. That is actually true. It was, yeah, it was pretty, um, yeah. When you, <laughs> when you said there was four years between Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises, did it feel like when, the, when Dark Knight Rises came out, did it seem like that was enough time for Batman to become this decrepit... Weird, no. weird old man. It didn't, did it? No. Also, it's set. It's set longer though, because I think. Yeah. I, from memory, I'm probably wrong, but Batman, Batman, The Dark Knight is set just after Batman begins, begins in 2005, mm. and then The Dark Knight Rises is set, I think, in 2012. So there's like it's supposed to. It's supposed to be a seven year gap. Right. Four, gotcha. Or something like that. It's something. Like- might be eight. I don't remember, but it's <laughs> but it's a longer time than the movies. Yeah, right. In between uh-huh. the movies, because you had to grow that that beard. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but you probably could have done a month. If I'm honest. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. But then you got to groom it got for groom- years. Just also, yes, fix your knee in between movies, because he could have. He's a millionaire. <laughs> He's a billionaire. <laughs> He's a billionaire. Bring it. Just bring a doctor. He's got in. a billion dollars and yeah. then some. How did you ruin your knee, Bruce Wayne? I was playing croquet as a rich person would. It's not a crime fighting thing. And the doctor would be like, okay then, yeah. have some surgery. I now didn't you're fine. ask. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're rich. I yeah. don't care. That's right. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so you're saying for Aquaman fever to be quenched, you're okay with this twin? That actually yeah. makes sense with the, the other one in the middle. Mm-hmm. Mason, there's been a big controversy around freedom of speech and Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, no. You thought freedom of speech you, it was riding high. I thought that I had an unquenchable... Mm-hmm. Freedom of speech fever. Do you? That was unquenchable. <laughs> yes. Because my freedom of speech rights were under attack. Yes. The government... The government. ...has stopped people from saying mean things on Rotten Tomatoes, apparently. Well, it's not so much that. It's uh, the percent, the want-to-see percentage was removed. And this is their statement. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, yeah. right. Uh, they want to do it more accurately and authentically, uh, representing the voice of fans while protecting the data in public forums. Uh uh, sorry, this was the reason. From it says from bad actors. I, I think I've copied a lunatic. No, bad actors is a is a real term. What do you mean by that? Like people who are acting in bad. Oh, play. I'm He's thinking. I'm actor. thinking like. No, not I thought from this bad like actors. A, like bloody Brie Larson, whatever. <laughs> one of those things again. Yeah, right. Uh, unfortunately, we have we have seen an uh, uptick in non-constructive input, sometimes bordering on trolling, which we believe is a disservice to the general readership. Uh, we've decided turning off this feature from now is the best course of action on everything. No, this is just before the, you can't vote before the movie comes out. Yeah, right. Uh huh. And that's essentially it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Care. So you're not allowed. To, so you can't. No, he's, well, I can't. I don't care. <laughs> I didn't care before. It was. I didn't care. Yeah. It was there, and I don't care. It's not there. I don't check Rotten Tomatoes. I'll be honest. I'll check it after I see a movie to see 
just a general and I might skim some reviews yeah, to be right, like what uh-huh. do people think of this yeah. thing I was big on it back in the day and it wasn't because and again the, the, the percentage figure like that's not what you're supposed to look at you're supposed to look at yeah. all the indiv- you click the individual reviews and go oh that's a that's a burn that's a burn that's pretty good and I do think it is interesting to see say the audience uh, because the, the one of the ones at the moment, Elite of Battle Angel has a very high audience score, but like a 60% critic score. Yeah, right. I uh-huh. do find that interesting that this movie is, you know, more more popular than, you know, than I guess it's doing financially and also it did. Yeah, with, right. With uh-huh. reviews, though, it's, the, the, though it is doing well in China. But then you, and same with like The Last Jedi, it's like at about 50%, but it's got very high reviews. You know, I, mm-hmm. I do think I find that interesting, but that, so that's not going away. But I don't care. Like, clearly this was being bombarded. Because yeah, right, it kept uh-huh. dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping, and people were talking about making accounts and, and but that, but that's just one figure, right? Yes. So it's just zero percent want to see it. Or what? I think it was down to twenty or thirty. But what? Is, what does that matter? It you doesn't. Know what I mean, it doesn't matter. It I don't care. I don't care if the general public don't want to see a movie that I'm <laughs> looking forward to. Why would I care? Yeah, that's it. So look, and I know because there's been. We'll talk about it more next week after Captain Marvel comes out. But there's a lot of like. You know, Brie Larson should shut up about political, et cetera, et cetera. But if you look at the MCU, Mark Ruffalo is the same. Mm-hmm. Chris Evans is the same. Yep. And that there isn't... And, that, and to be fair, they don't... They haven't talked about that as much in their press conferences, but they're very vocal about their political stance. Yeah. But and you don't also, get people going, I'm not going to see yeah. Thor Ragnarok. I'm not going to see the Avengers because of yeah. that. And also, uh, they're not just blurting out... <laughs> They're not like, hey, have you got anything to say about? Uh, you got anything to say about your movie? And they're like, I think you should free all the refugees. <laughs> like that's not how it's mm. going. It's the, it's the journalist asking them questions, and I imagine there's a lot of people asking Brie Larson loaded questions, yeah. and she can't be like, you know what, no comment, or she can't mm. be like, I don't care about women in film or whatever. <laughs> She's they're going to ask her about women in film. She's going to give an opinion about yeah. women in film, and then people are going to get upset by that. Or happy, you yeah, happy, yeah, on uh-huh. where people are at, yeah. But- Look, man, this shit is exhausting. It is, isn't it? And I just can't. Especially if you had a big weekend with the boys. Oh, mate, my mate boys, boys, there. Boys. You know what he's like. Yeah. <laughs> Never met him, though. He's good, too. Yeah, you're right. Okay, in other news... Sorry, I've written here. In other bad news, Mason. Yes. Uh, okay, I'm going to read this out to you, and then you've got to tell me what property you think it is. This is a little game Ooh, I like okay. to call a thing I just made up to throw Mason under the bus. Okay. <laughs> Uh, this is from Mattel's head of film, Robbie Brenner. Mattel, okay, so yes. that's a toy brand. Correct. Okay. MGM Pictures has tremendous expertise and a proven track record. MGM, James Bond Jr. Yes, that's right. It's the James Bond Jr. action figure game. Toy, toy line. Movie. Yes. In, in the style of the Lego movie, it's just James Bond Jr. action figures. It's just those four action figures that they yep. made. Yep. <laughs> Back on the big screen. James Bond Jr., weird version of Jaws. Maybe a Blofeld? Is he American? Was can't he American? Remember. I, don't I don't remember. think he was. No, I think he might have been British. Okay, great. I'm going to look it up. But anyway, yeah. uh, here's a game I'm calling. I'm pretending to listen to you, but I'm actually Googling James Bond Jr. You have to hear this, Mason. All right, I'm listening. But no, but no we'll, do, we'll, do, we'll find out whether James Bond Jr. is... is um. Okay. Is James he... Bond Jr.? The name was first used in 1967 mm. for a spin-off novel entitled The Adventures of James Bond Jr. 003 and a half, authored by the never clarified pseudonym R.D. Mascot. What? So it's just a random author under the name R.D. Mascot wrote the book and nobody ever nobody knows who he is. This is a Finding Drago sequel in the making. <laughs> Absolutely it is. Revolving around the nephew of James Bond, no surviving relatives are mentioned in Fleming's novel, although he unknowingly conceived a child with former Japanese film actress Kissy Suzuki. And you only <laughs> lived twice. I didn't know that. 65 episodes. Good Lord. Yeah. He's voiced by Corey Burton. Yes. And he attends Warfield Academy with his friends who aid him in his missions. IQ, the grandson of Q. Gordo Leiter, the son of Felix Leiter. So good. What are the odds that all these people I know. have had relatives and they all hang out together? Expanding on his uncle's famous line, James Bond Jr.'s catchphrase was, Bond, James Bond Jr. <laughs> Doesn't work, does it? Doesn't work at all. <laughs> Anyway, it seems like he's English. Yeah. From okay. the name of the school and the yeah, people he's right, hanging right, around uh-huh. and whatever. Yeah. yeah. Do you need to know any more? Uh, no, but the villains were Jaws, Knickknack, Goldfinger, and Oddjob. I thought Knickknack died in that briefcase. I also thought that. Interesting. Yeah. And he's up against Scum. That's right. James Bond Jr. chases Scum around the world. Remember no. the same song? Sort of. This show that I reckon I've seen once. Yeah, nice. There was a, there was a video game. There by, was too. By the... Uh, the company that only ever produced terrible games, oh, LJN. Yeah. Uh, shock and yeah. horror. Uh-huh. Never right. a good oh, game. Oh, Dr. No's in it as well? Ooh. Where's James Bond? 
I don't think he ever shows up. Why would he? He's a murderer. Yeah, he's right. He's on the run. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, direct the MGM have a uh, record of capturing audiences' imagination through film, and we're proud to be partnering with them to bring another Mattel franchise to theaters. Ooh. This marks another important milestone as we transform Mattel into an IP-driven, high-performing toy company. Yuck! <laughs> Yuck! It's not Barbie. Yuck and boo. Is it Barbie? Barbie makes sense. Oh, this doesn't make sense. Oh, that means it's like Nerf or something. It's. Do I want to tell you? Yeah. It's Viewmaster. Yes. <laughs> so the, the 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 little binocular thing, the clicky thing yep. with the wheel in it. Yep. That has the little pictures in it. Yep. Incredible. You know what's better than a Viewmaster? I wouldn't Master? have guessed that in a billion years. No. You know what's better than a Viewmaster? Anything else? An iPad that every kid has. Yeah. Right. No kids looking through a Viewmaster. Absolutely this not. Is so off base. Yeah. Do you get sucked into it? I guess you have to because there's different worlds and. Yeah. Uh-huh. I liked Viewmasters as a kid because there was no way to see like clips like not clips still images from the movie aladdin <laughs> or whatever and you could the yeah right, looked like uh-huh. cells from the movie yeah. or whatever but good lord yeah what what is are they does that mean they, they must still make view masters i don't know mm, probably more vintage and collectibles and special editions and yeah whatever, right and uh-huh. this one's the james bond jr version and <sighs> etc when they say bring another mattel franchise to theaters yeah what are the battleship. other ship yeah that's battleship? what i was gonna say what are the other ones i don't know or is Mattel Hasbro? Is, is Battleship Hasbro? It might very well be. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to find... Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, well, they've got Masters of the Universe, apparently. Film history, okay. Uh, okay, in 2014, they had Team Hot Wheels. They had a okay. stop, motion, stop motion WWE Slam. Thomas and Friends. Max Steel, which bombed hard. Oh, yes. Uh, Dreamtopia, don't know. Monster High, don't know what that is. Toy Box. And then upcoming, Masters of the Universe, Barbie, Hot Wheels, American Girl. Okay. All right. I don't know who that is. It's dolls. It's probably a Bratz thing. Mm. Anyway, like a Bratz esque thing. Wikipedia says most current Viewmaster reels are intended for children. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't surprise me. But what does surprise me is that Kids they're, would they're buy still them? they're still making them. I guess. I guess it's if you, you know, is it is it the idea like, well, if you don't want your kids on on the bloody iPad and they've got they've got too much stimulation and it's too much. But he have give give him this one thing that only does this thing. Yeah, is that what it is? Yeah, give him these twelve pictures they can look <laughs> right? at. Right. Uh huh. Look out a window, man. Yeah. <laughs> See some moving objects. See some moving. <laughs> Enjoy objects. them. Anyway, uh, look, anything can be good. This is the exception. <laughs> In other bad news, Mason. Yes. Or do you, or do you want? We have more Mattel things uh, to say. Oh, twenty fifteen to present. Viewmaster. Yep. Virtual reality. But that's not a movie. In February 2015, Mattel announced a collaboration with Google to produce a new version of the Viewmaster called the Viewmaster Virtual Reality Viewer. See, I understand if they were like... It's we're... just Google Cardboard. Yeah, You just okay. put it on your phone. But if they were like, we're making a virtual reality device or a series of webisodes or something yeah, right. with the Viewmaster brand, I understand that. Yep. Yes, I do not understand. No, no, anyway, no, no. Mason, it's time for ad. Z. Two ads. Ooh. And the first ads... Two ads is for is, Harry's... Is this ads with a Z? <laughs> yes. To make them cooler. Yeah, exactly. Because ads, you normally think about ads, you're like, oh, I don't want to listen no. to any ads. But if I was like, hey, ads... It's like my cool mate ads. Yeah. Like, you know, you add them, but you shorten it because he skateboards to ads. To ads, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, these are a couple of ads for products for purchase, but they're all on skateboards. Correct. If you're thinking, I don't want to listen to this because it's not cool enough, imagine they're on skateboards. Just imagine it. Yeah. Mason, we love Harry's Razors. Specifically... Because their hats are on backwards. Yes. You know? Look, you shouldn't use a razor while you're shaving. Right? No, you should. <laughs> you heard it here first, <laughs> folks. While you're skateboarding. Oh, yes. If you're, if you're, if you're skateboarding with your mate ads. Yeah, but imagine if you were. <laughs> imagine how many hits you would get on your viral video. Yeah. You're, on a, you're coming up on the half pipe. Sure. Come up the top of the half pipe and whatever move that's called. Mm. You, do, you do a... Seven, kick flip. You do a kick flip. Yep. You do a seven twenty. Yeah. And when you you know they you come right up to that fisheye lens of that camera. Mm. Bit of a shave. <laughs> well, you get you get mad air and then you just do a bit of a shave in front of the camera. <laughs> bit and of then a you go up. back down the other end and then you like there's a little dish of water and you like sploosh your face down the other end. Anyways, that's why we love Harry's razors. Yes. But also for the closeness of their shave, mm-hmm. the comfortable glide. The blades also last a really long time. Yeah. They what? don't blunt easily. It's actually quite difficult. What I should do at some point, because mm. it's actually because it's been so long since I've used any other razor brand, mm. I should go back and try one of the other ones. Yes, because it's been like all I remember from the other brands is you use them like three or four times, 
and then just pulling them down your face. It's just like this bloody <laughs> Absolute torture. Absolute agony. <laughs> but these are like, it just, it's, yeah. I, I've, I've forgotten what that feeling is because these ones are good. Absolutely. You just put is. them on, you're like, mm, feels good. You can actually join the 10 million people who have tried Harry's and bloody cl- hell. Cl- I know, claim, the off- claim a special offer from us by going to harrys.com slash weekly planet. And Mason, Harry's, I don't know if you know this, but. The creators, they, they were tired of playing for overpriced raises and having a middleman, a man between them and their raises. Wow, so in between the one side of the half pipe the half and, pipe the, and other the other side, side of the half pipe. Just getting in the way down in the middle there. No, I understand. You've got to go around him. They didn't he's want, the dean. Exa- he's the you dean know? of raises. Mm. You don't want you don't want all the excess accoutrement, you know what I mean, your vibrating Good heads. Use of accoutrements. Your, thank you. Is that in the copy? Did it you? absolutely is not. I brought wow. that with me today. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, it's just a simple, clean design with durable bra- blades at a fair price, and they've done that by build- uh, by buying a world class factory in Germany that's been making blades for over ninety five years. And there's twenty thousand five star reviews on Trustpilot and Google. Ooh. Cartridges are just two dollars each, and that's half the price of Gillette Fusion Pro Shield, whatever the fuck that is. <laughs> All Harry's blades come with the. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sick. I'm just. Like, I'm sick of their razors, mate. Me too. <laughs> I'm sick of their nonsense. Uh, all Stop ha- having weird. Stop having weird. Words at the end of your races, they're no good. So, so, Fusion, more like no good. All the old ad copies that I haven't read this one before are like, don't mention, don't mention other a competing blades, brand. But this yeah. is like clearly attack. Yeah, they're like <laughs> brands directly. <laughs> really just. And I'm more than willing to do that. I'm some, off, off the leash. Say something mean about their mothers, <laughs> says specifically. That's weird, but we'll do it. All Harry's blades come with a 100% quality guarantee. And if you don't, I'd love your shave. Uh, let them know. Get in the grave. That's, that's, but also, you'll get a f- full refund. Oh, sorry. I thought we were rhyming. No, no. Mind. We weren't doing that. Get a $13 value trial set that comes with everything you need for a close, comfortable shave. That's weighted ergonomic handle, five-blade razor with a lubricating strip and trimmer blade, rich lathering shave gel, travel blade cover, and listeners of the show can redeem their trial set at harrys.com slash weeklyplanet. Make sure you go to harrys.com slash weeklyplanet to redeem your offer and let them know that we sent you to help support the show. That is a good, that's a good deal and that's going to last a long time. Agreed. So if you just like like, I want to pay, what does it cost you, bloody, what do you get? Cost a few, few bucks off? What do you get there? It's $2 a razor yeah, yeah. of a blade for refills, so but just, it's $13 so just, value So just trying for that, free. Just trying that mm. out. Cost, yeah, that's 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 a bargain. Absolute that's going to last you a while. Yeah. And Mason, we've got a returning sponsor this week. Ooh. They got back in contact. We thought it was over. We thought the love affair was dead, Mason. That's right. But these fires have been rekindled. We thought we'd have to divest our record collections. <laughs> and we're going to have to give half my record collection to them. I don't want that. No. And luckily, we don't have to. That's right. Because Mac Weldon are back, baby. They're back welded. Back welded. Uh, they've been a long time supporter of this show. That's and right. It's, it's great to have them back on board because they are a clothing company that believes in smart design, premium fabrics, uh, fabrics and simple shopping. Their website's fantastic to use clean to face wonderful t-shirts i'm wearing mm-hmm. one right now mason it's i'll true never are. stop that you're gonna say i'll never take it off i'll have to at some point obviously all <laughs> sure, right but all that but maybe not as soon as you'd think because all their products are naturally antimicrobial which means they eliminate odor and if you want to be comfortable uh and you don't like your first pair they want you to be comfortable and if you don't like your first pair you can keep it and they will refund you no questions asked i'm glad they're back because you've just you are saying antimicrobial like a champion now. That's right. Mate. Imagine if you just perfected it and they're like, we don't want to deal with you anymore. <laughs> You're like, well, I'll have to become a microbiologist, I guess. Maybe they, they let us back in because they knew that I'd worked on our relationship. I'd made the effort. You'd made the effort, exactly. <laughs> That's right. You remember their birthday. That's it. You know how to pronounce all their favorite words. Yeah. You can attest to this. They, they do great underwear. Mm-hmm. I'm wearing them right now. Fancy uh, But they do underwear. They do socks and shirts that look good. They perform well too. It's good for working out, going to work, going on dates, just everyday life. Go to MacWeldon.com and get 20% off by using promo code PLANET. That's MacWeldon.com, 20% off prom- for, with promo code PLANET. It's good to have them back, Weldon, Mason, isn't Absolutely it? Absolutely it is. It's wonderful. Let's go on with the show. Let's do a show. Uh, Dark Phoenix has a trailer. A trailer <laughs> which before the show I said, had you seen? And you went, yeah. And then I went, but I wasn't sure that you had. And I said, the bit where they, spoiler alert, you can jump ahead, where they just show Mystique's going to die. And you went, oh, no, I didn't watch that. So you thought you'd watched it. Yeah. And you- <laughs> I think my brain went, you know what? You've seen enough <laughs> of movies. We've all had a- This was the straw that broke the camel's back. You've seen enough movies. Don't even worry about it. It's fine. No, I hadn't seen it, but I did watch it. Just now. They, this one, they've clearly gone, okay, we need to differentiate this more from X-Men 3. So let's put in some space stuff. Let's put in some Phoenixy stuff. But it looks the same, right? Yeah. Even the coat at the end. The yeah, red leather sure. coat. Yeah, for sure. It does. It looks exactly. And look, the problem with this is as I watched 
uh, this trailer is it's hard for me to feel anything for these characters yeah. because they're all different actors and I've never really gotten to... Like, I've never... I like McAvoy and uh, Mystique, I guess, except for the last one. Yeah, right. And Magneto or whatever. But the rest of the team... Yeah, don't. They're I don't just... Care. I don't care about Beast. He's been in all of them and I don't care. Has it, but it's, has it been the same actor as playing Cyclops for the last couple of movies? I don't know. Yes, I think he was only in the last one. Right. He? Don't know. Yeah, it's diff- like I can't. I don't care about like at least with the f- the first three. Yeah, they're not perfect movies by any stretch of the Im- imagination. They are. I you know they're great at the time, especially the first couple. Mm. But at least when James Marsden's character died in three, yeah. or dis or disintegrated or disappeared or whatever happened to him. Yeah, he's still alive somewhere. Uh, at least I cared then because I yes. enjoyed his work for the first two. But this, I don't know. Like that's that, a really it, good what, point. That, ver- yeah. that version, of the, that, that version of Storm. Do we get her in Apocalypse and that's yes. it? Yes. And she was a was she a bad guy for five minutes. Yeah. And then she's a good, she got... I don't care about her. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. Bring back Toad. It's a good point. If this was the final Fox X Men movie, yeah. and it was with the original cast, yeah. I would be a hundred percent on board with this, even if it looked like this. Right. Yes, <laughs> not a hundred percent. Wait. Maybe, so but... <laughs> does this mean that there was all, there was already an X Men three, and this is a rehash of that? Well, because the timelines reset anyway after yeah, Days right. of Future Past, they could just do X Men three again. What if? Okay, what if this? <laughs> That's what they should call it. It was called X Men three. It was again. called X Men three again, and it had all the original cast members, and it, like it, and towards at the end of every scene, all the characters like look around and like, is this? Is that before? Are we doing X Men Three again? What's this? <laughs> what are we? Are you are you evil now? Because I remember a few years ago you were evil. Is that? Oh, you are. So what's going on here? Oh, bloody hell! Yeah. So instead of the professor, professor X death, we get the Jean Grey. Not Jean Grey. We get the mistake, mistake death. dies. Yeah. It's the opposite of Endgame because Endgame is like we're going to show you two minutes of footage. Yep. In the first ten minutes of the film, and nothing else. Yeah, seen. right. But this is like this is every beat. Yeah, including the death of a major character from this franchise. We got two trailers this week that I think gave away every beat yes. of a movie. We'll talk about the other one in a minute, a I bit, guess. Yeah, but, but yeah, no, it really. There's there's nothing. What do you? What do you? And I, I guess the dilemma is, you know, obviously, if they don't give us enough effect shots or enough people emoting, we won't go and see it. Mm. But the, there's. A I would fun. not say that to this if it wasn't for this show. Yeah, right. One hundred percent. I yeah, would not uh-huh. say this. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I don't even think it's that bad a trailer. I yeah. think it's kind of a good trailer in parts. Yeah, right. But it's just everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's mutant collars. You see them on the train. They oh got yeah. Who do you think's captured them? Just the government. Just the government. Because apparently another, in this day, maybe it's Striker again. You could be Striker again. It's probably someone from another movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who's young now? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's probably Emma Frost, which is a seven-year-old girl now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, uh, lost my train of thought about this movie. It doesn't matter. Have I seen this trailer? You've definitely seen it. Okay, I watched you watch it. I did watch unless it. Unless you were true. watching something else. No, I did watch it. I do it. have a favorite moment from the trailer, though. Uh-huh. I think it's time for a new Professor Rex impression, and this I've... is going to be the line. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. You know what it is, probably. Okay, so we'll say it without any... Say it without any... Uh, I'm not going to say I'm going to play it. Okay, cool. Then we'll, yeah. do our, we'll do our impressions. Okay. Tell me how we fix this, Tell me what to do. I don't know what to do. Ah, that's good. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. It's <laughs> <laughs> good. He's a very good actor, but that is. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh boy. Yeah. I don't know what to do. That's it's very Patrick Stewart esque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't uh-huh. it? yeah. Uh-huh. Man. Well, someone was t- we when we watched Glass. Wait, what did we watch? Glass. What was the last one? Glass. It was Glass. It was glass. <laughs> when we watched Glass, uh, we talked about how we enjoyed the fact that he could, you know, one of his his acting skills is, you know, you can go, you know, you can go between characters very yeah. very quickly. He's like, you know, like in a single sh- like take that. Whatever, yeah. Apparently, I've been informed since that that's a very common thing for actors to like an actor training. Ah. Like it's like acting one hundred and one. They do it in a workshop or whatever. yeah, they do it in they a workshop. Face each other. And, and just do and 10 just different do... characters in a row. Well. Yeah. Then boo. <laughs> boo, right? <laughs> yeah. If I'd have known that, I would have booed in the cinema. Exactly. But yeah, okay. This... I mean, that's still... I can't do that. No, exactly. Like, that's still a very either. specific yeah, yeah, and yeah. difficult uh-huh. skill. Yeah. So apparently in this one, uh, in Dark Phoenix, now they're on the side. Like, the government's on, like, sort of on, right. on their side now. And I'd imagine it's a situation where they don't, they don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. <laughs> so go on. They, the, the X-Men do an ad Ghostbusters style. They're like... <laughs> Hello, we're the X Men. 
Uh, do you have any? Do you have a? Do you have some sort of dilemma? Do you have a problem? Do you not not know what to do? <laughs> then call the X Men because we know what to do. You just reminded me on Ghostbusters news. I'm gonna put that in. Ah, oh, Ghostbusters news. Yeah, I'll put that in for a bit later. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Looks, yeah, looks alright. Yeah. What I did like is that they've the, uh, Professor X's current look is like the Chris Claremont '80s. X-Men oh look. man! He's got yeah. the turtle. He's got the black turtleneck and like some bur- a burgundy pant. Yes. Yeah. Looks all right. Yeah. He looks very tan as well. Yeah. Right. He's got a big old tan. Yeah. Do you know why? Because he's had time to tan his hair between movies. Exactly. If, if I shave my head right now, yeah, my head would be transparent. No, it'd be grey. <laughs> my actual scalp. Yeah, your scalp's grey as well. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but your rejuvenation shampoo it actually just transfers the grey into your just head, and into in. your skull and bloodstream. So, <laughs> just pushes it down. Incredible. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we. I don't know what to do, Mason. No, I don't know what to do either. <laughs> Should we watch this movie? I don't know what to do. I was watching Screen Junkers the other day, and uh, Dan Mill said something interesting. He said he spoke to somebody who cut the Terminator Genesis trailer together. Yeah, right. And if you remember that trailer, it gives away the twist that John Connor is a new. Terminator, yeah, right. Nanobot uh-huh. tech, technology Terminator, and they said they put that in because the studio was worried that people wouldn't go with it in the in the movies or get it or like it. So they shot, but before people go in, so you're not you you you're ready for it. So you're huh. not like that's a crap twist. You're like, well, it's in the trailer. I knew that, and I'm used to it by now. Wow. But or you might be like, what's going on? Yes, I would have enjoyed that movie more than none. If I didn't know that going yeah. into that movie, mm-hmm. I know you yeah. liked it. To some I liked it because it's it, it's gone completely off the rails. Actually, I like the first twenty minutes of that yeah. movie. Uh-huh. But um, anyway, I don't know what to do, Mason. <laughs> I don't know I what just to do. Don't know what to do. Oh. Uh, in other X Men news, um, X Men Ghost School. Uh, yeah, the New Mutants. Whatever. It, that's it. I actually, I couldn't remember the name of it, so I just wrote X Men Ghost, Ghost School. School. And I'm like, I'm not looking it up. People know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> that I feel is a new low for disinterest. <laughs> In the X-Men franchise. If somebody's like, hmm, I wanted to think of the name of this movie, but I couldn't. I can't be bothered looking it up. <laughs> That's not a good sign for box yeah. office. And I'm it, typing this on a computer. I've got tabs open. It yeah. would take me five seconds. We exist in a universe where you could just yell, what's the name of the new X-Men movie? And it would just your phone would just light up and give you the answer. You wouldn't even have to touch it. And you were like, mm, can't be bothered, actually. Anyway, so X-Men... New Mutants. Fuck it out. Um, apparently, they don't really know apparently what they're going to do with it. Yeah, and it might go to Disney Plus. I think I read that they scheduled reshoots many months ago, but they just didn't do them. Yes, that's a good sign. <laughs> really you know, good sign. Yeah. <laughs> mm. The thing is, to Fox, why should they? Why should they wrap any of this up well? Yeah. What's right? the incentive? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the potentially a good box office. But uh-huh. if it's not good and they can't fix it, yeah, why? Well, that's true. They're just selling it anyway. Well, it doesn't matter. Isn't that? Wasn't that something to do with uh, Spider-Man Three? Wasn't didn't Sam Raimi sort of? Isn't it rumored that he sort of tro- chose to drive a couple of the characters in the ground, like Venom? Yeah, so he killed him so he couldn't do him in another. Yeah, movie right. Because they yeah. demanded that he used Venom. I don't know if that's true or if that's no, just something we've is, said no, on this podcast. That is true. That they made him use him. They yeah. made him use Venom, so he's like, "Well, I'll create Venom and then I'll kill him." Like, you can see his skeleton as he explodes. People have uh, pointed out that you can't see a skeleton. Can't you? If you go back, yes. you can 100% see a skeleton. See, that's what I'm feeling. I, need people... I thought there was going to be a revelation that I've no, gone crazy. No, I thought I'd gone mad, but right. I checked it, uh-huh. and, and you can see a skeleton. Okay, that's good. Yeah, he's, yeah. But, if so, we hadn't, but now we've got a new Venom, so that's good, isn't that's it? That's true, it is. And it's going to be carnage. <laughs> Don't know what to do. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, exactly. Why wouldn't you just drive this franchise into the ground? Yeah. What you should do, what they should do is just use some reshoots to paint all these characters into corners they can't emerge from. Literally. Yeah. Mm, poison paint. Poison paint. <laughs> they don't know what they to do. They don't know what to do. Because <laughs> there's a poison, if they step over the poison paint. I don't think die. any of them are flying ones either. No, that's true. So there you bloody go. Mm-hmm. No, uh, not even flippy over ones because Mystique's dead. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, Maybe. No, Simon Kimber gave an interview and he said, the director, he said, she's, she's dead. Maybe, maybe driving into the ground, though, is good for Marvel because then they can be like, we can do anything. That's true, yeah. It will succeed just because it's not the other ones, <laughs> yeah. is what I'm saying. Uh-huh. Literally anything. You think Simon Kinberg's being paid off by Marvel? 
<laughs> it's very who knows. I know we've talked about is he the guy? You know, is he is he making good movies? Is he making bad movies? This, this Dark Phoenix is his first directed movie. We'll see then, won't we? Yeah, but I think also. It's Fox, and this franchise is a thousand years old, and nobody cares, and it's being handed over. So yeah. I don't think it's indicative of his talents necessarily, even then. No, exactly. I'm yeah. sure they just hand him the script and go, just do what you can. <laughs> or don't. Or don't. It's fine. <laughs> you don't know what to do. Yep. We don't know what to do. They just get him one side of a, of a boardroom meeting table, and they slide over. With one hand, they slide over a script. The other hand, they slide over a gun. <laughs> like, do whatever you want. <laughs> shoot yourself, shoot us, we don't mind. <laughs> Whatever you want. It's your call. <laughs> and he and he go and he thinks about it for a minute. They just stare. You can hear the clock ticking. And then he just puts his hand on the script and they all go, Oh <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> we see it we'll see it six months. <laughs> Why would you just make X Men three again? I don't know. What are you, what are you and doing? And again, it's the Phoenix saga. Yeah, it's not- it went for years. Yeah. I think it maybe it went four years. It went four years. So just yeah, let's uh, c- compact that into into two hours. I know they had to make one because they could only make because it was all. But come on, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> just look back at the movie you made. Yeah, look at that one. Yeah, and then don't do it. Do yeah. a different one. Don't do anything. Uh, Black Widow. It could be great. Do that new X Men one. You know, remember Grant Morrison's new X Men? Yeah, that absolutely. They should do that one. It was a good one. I feel like they're probably going to do it with Marvel. They're probably. That that I would love that, but they I feel like they're going to do like sixties X Men the way that they did Spider Man Homecoming is a lot yeah. like sixties Spider Man yeah, right. in a lot of ways, uh-huh. like a lot of early callbacks. Yeah, I don't know that for a fact. Because new X Men was good. And I'll tell you why it was good. Black because suits, black suits, and cool with a big X on them. Yeah. But but also it's because they went okay. If you were actually a mutant in the modern era, mm. that'd be really cool. Mm. Like people would think you were cool. Yeah, you'd be like you'd be like a rock star kind of yeah. guy. You wouldn't be like, oh, I'm so sad that I can fly. I can shoot lasers out of my eyes. It's real sad. Ah, uh, but it's a like, metaphor, Mason. It is a metaphor. It's true. People who can really fly and people don't like them. That's right. People with jetpacks. Oh, yeah, saying. that's true. Yeah. Uh, Black Widow is apparently not rated R. Um, the Black Widow movie. Okay. Shock and horror. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kevin Feige said, "Yeah, I don't know where that rumor started, but it's not." Okay. So, there you go. That's yeah. all we know about it. Is it a prequel? Is it a sequel? I don't know. Don't or I. care at this point. Oh. Yeah. I not, care. I wouldn't. No. I, if it was a cool team up. Yeah, right. Because, right. I, look, I just don't want a sad prequel. That's Same, it. exactly, If yeah. it's anything but that, great. Yeah. It's probably not going to be a sad prequel. Has Marvel done any sad... We we've had, had any... sad flashbacks. Yeah, but we've not had a sad full movie, right? Not yet, no. I didn't think so. Yeah. Speaking of sad full movies, Mason. Yeah, here we go. Hellboy's got an R-rated trailer. Oh, yeah. Confirmed as R-rated itself. Yeah. I like this trailer more than the last one. Same. But as you said... The whole movie's, the whole movie's in, in there. If Where you does he come from? Where's he coming Chicken from? Chicken Leg House... What's he villain? What, there's the villain. How's he gonna? How's he gonna power up for the final battle? What's he gonna do? Join me. Exactly. I won't like, join you. But you could. You th- could rule with me. I don't I want to. Don't want to. <laughs> yeah. The whole the whole movie's in uh, in that, in this trailer. Yeah. There's gonna be no. Well, maybe there are. There'll be a couple of surprises, but I doubt it. Mm. There looks. It looks like they've taken all the action beats and all the special effects and all the big monstery surprises. Yeah. And they've just put them all in the movie. Like we now we we're not gonna. We're not going to be surprised by whatever attacks London. Yeah, we've seen it. We're not going to be the Hellboy comic. Is that set in London? No. Okay. Well, I mean, it's it's uh, it's all it's all about the place. Yeah, right. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we're we're not going to be surprised when he goes to the forest and he fights a big monster or whatever. It's all yeah. in there. It's it looks. Then you know, there's some. It looks a bit Hansel and Gretel witch hunter monster it does a bit, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah. But I think this looks okay. Same. I'm not sold on the David Harbor. Face in particular, yeah, right. So I think I thought you could really. So I probably said this last time. You could really see the Ron Perlman in the last one, but yeah, I right. don't feel like uh-huh. I can't really see the David Harbour in this. I see, yeah. But uh, he's also not bald. They haven't given him his bloody. He's not. He's not bald. <laughs> yeah, he's, that's you know, true. His little... Well, isn't this a younger Hellboy? Maybe. It is, yeah, okay, he's yeah. not bald, Mason. Uh-huh. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. I want him to shave his head and it's grey underneath like mine. <laughs> yes, the, then he finally can have a relatable point of view character. Yeah, absolutely. But isn't Hellboy not... Like, doesn't he often have the ponytail at the back? Yeah, he does. But he's bald on top. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. The, okay. Yeah. I don't know. Because also it shows at the start where he, he, he's summoned from, from a portal because he, he was going to be a weapon from the Nazis or whatever. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. We saw that in Hellboy 2. So that in Hellboy, or yeah. maybe one. Sort of one. One of them in, in the flashback. So I'm kind of like, well, we saw that, didn't we? It's kind yeah. of like... The Amazing Spider-Man situation where it's like, well, what if the Spider-Man origin, but it's a different guy? Yep. 
Okay. And a different spider zapped by a different thing. Very interesting. Mm. Yep. Uh, what if it's a different Nazi with a different set of Nazi 3D glasses? Uh, yeah. A view mo- viewfinder or whatever. Mm, that's right. I, I like that it's bloody. That it's mm. like uh, it's R-rated and all that. I like that they've got the chicken leg house in there. Yes. I appreciate that. I know we're a big fan of the chicken leg house. Mm. Can it walk? Yes. Looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah. Only two legs, though. Because we were debating that last time. Yeah, that's right. Baba a, Yaga's house has a, two legs. Yeah. Is Baba Yaga is not the Mila Jovovich one? Or is it that is her? I don't know because we see somebody, I think, we see a cutaway into the house. As a weird demon and there's like a demon, a demon person in there. So maybe that's Baba Yaga. I'll have I don't a look. think. If maybe but sometimes it's a young witch is an old witch. Which, you know? is a, which is a fifth century sorceress, according to the trailer. So let's yeah. see. Let's look up Baba Yaga again. Yeah, it says her name is uh, not that. Okay. Her name is bloody. Nimue the something something. Oh, Nimue. Thomas Hayden Church is in this. Ooh, really? Yeah. Is he one of the big? Is he one of the big monsters? I bet he's the big monster that uh, Hellboy cuts all its arms and legs mm. off. I like Daniel Day Kim as well. He was in Lost. Yeah. And then he's kind of he pops up now and then, but now he's a were leopard. <laughs> yes. Which is again, it... no surprises. Yeah, exactly. Surprise it's... everyone, no surprises. It reminds me of that movie Night Watch Day Watch where people turn into animals, or yeah. sometimes they say they do and then they don't. <laughs> they don't. Bear. If you don't know what we're talking about, don't worry about it. Mm. You don't need to know. Uh, Kevin Feige has also talked about The Eternals, which will be coming to Marvel big screen. Radio then. Uh, I believe this is what he said, and I know this because I wrote it down. Okay. But seeing returning characters is certainly something we're going to do and want to do, but in- also introducing characters that the majority of the world has never heard of. Eternals are one group, but we like the idea of in- introducing an ensemble, doing an ensemble movie from the start as opposed to building up. Th- Things like we did for the Avengers. So more like Guardians, not tonally, but the idea of introducing a new group of people. Mm. So Justice League is what he's saying, Mason. He's doing <laughs> Justice League. Oh, dear. Yeah. So what do you think of that? I'm excited. to. Do we it. don't need Origins for all Eternals, do we? And I then don't think so. An Eternals movie? Again, do it in five seconds. Yeah. Like, I think we've reached the era where we don't have to... Not everybody needs an origin story. Yep. Not everybody... We get the idea of... We're not we're not staring at the screen going, why is that guy? Why can he fly? Yeah, exactly. What's going on there? We, j- j- the guy just walked into the room, but where was he prior to this? <laughs> yep. So did he no, just, that's a plot hole. Did he pop into existence in the universe? Did he exist? Did he not exist prior to this scene? <laughs> all, all the only origin I want is Chicken Leg House. That's right. What are you doing? Yep. Where are you from? Do you, would you rather it be a house that grows legs or a chicken that a house is built around? Mm, good question. Oh, that one, definitely. Yeah, I think yeah, so I too. want the chicken to be inside when you open the door. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because, I mean, what, what are the odds a, chi- a house is going to grow legs? That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's, ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous and outlandish. That's right. Yeah. But imagine a very big chicken and then somebody builds a house around it to try and contain it. <laughs> but it can't be contained because it's too big a chicken. It's a big, it's a big chicken. It's too big a chicken to be contained. You'd be chicken. cooking dinner and a big chicken's just at you? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Just pecking at the stove. Yeah. Yeah. And you're cooking a giant egg. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's difficult enough. You're trying to crack it in the pan. It's the size of a bloody, bloody, uh, bloody uh, big thing. An American football. American, bigger than that. Bigger than that. Two yeah. American Two footballs. Two American footballs. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Uh, the other thing is that there's been talk of, uh, for the Eternals, they're going to cast their first openly gay actor. Oh, right. Uh, immediately, I don't know who that character might be. Maybe they mentioned it, but... For me, like Matthew Bomer, I think would be a perfect. Who's that again? Uh, he was going to be Superman at one point. I think he even played the animated version of him or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's he in Magic him Mike. Yeah. Uh, he's in a bunch of stuff. Where they've cast, I don't know if you're aware of this, but they've cast, they've done, there's some season two Titans casting. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. they put cast Superboy. They cast Superboy. He's Australian, yeah. that guy. Is he really? He is. We should get him on the show. Okay. No. Nah. He's probably in Hollywood. He probably is. Yeah. Uh, they're looking. He's uh, he's part of the the Blake mysteries. Oh. Formerly the Doctor Blake mysteries. Until he was a until, terrible the, bloke. until the, the the titular Doctor Blake was uh, kicked off the show for being terrible. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, Craig McLaughlin. Yeah. You flew too close to the sun. Yeah. Uh, the studio is currently searching for an actor in the thirty to forty nine age range who physically looks like a superhero to fill one of the main roles. Oh. So there you go. People think it might be Icarus. Could be a curse. Uh, or some other, some other options here. But yeah, I think whoever it is, Matthew Bowman would probably be a pretty good choice for that. Cool, man. Or that guy, Richard Bloody... What is Branson. It? Yeah, why not? I was okay. gonna, he's the guy who's best friend's wedding guy. Rupert, Rupert something. Everett. He's Rupert, Ev- now, Rupert yeah. Everett. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah he's sure. Right. Older he's older than that. Uh-huh. Anyway, Mason, Eternals. Good on it. Uh, yes. And will it be? Yes, it will. 
Mason, Variety of Reporting has reported that there's a new animated Gremlins, Gremlins series that's going to be a period piece that follows Mr. Wing, the Chinese grandfather played by the film's Aki Luke, uh, as a young man as he goes on adventures with a friendly Mowgli. No, with a friendly, yeah, Mogwai Gizmo. Yes, okay. Is that what you want to see from the Gremlins franchise? Uh, up until this moment, I didn't really want anything from the Gremlins franchise. Do you but... want to... Do you want it? Can you take it? Uh, what, like, what... Is it a is it a kids cartoon? Is it like a BoJack Horseman style cartoon? Uh, yeah, full please. of depression. Would, I would feel you... like it's going to be like an Avatar: The Last Airbender kind of. Dan, cartoon. I'm not interested. Really, that was a good show. Apparently, no? they made Voltron. All right, and Voltron's well, great. I, I get it. it. Oh, okay. Great. Well, okay. If it's in the style of Voltron, yeah, okay, I can see something like that. I don't know that. I just said, what if it's that? They team up and they're in a giant robot. That's what I want to. Yeah, mate. Me too. Yeah. Uh, I don't have anything else to say about Gremlins, do you? Uh, I've not thought about Gremlins in a while. So... You ever do the Gremlins ride a movie world on the Gold Coast? No. Um, interesting. Yeah, it is. You haven't been. You don't know. No, but if it's, I thought you meant it's interesting that I haven't. That's not interesting. It. Why would that be interesting? No, it's interesting. <laughs> it's interesting. There's also a trailer for De- Detective Pikachu. Yes. Looks fun, man. I also I agree it looks fun, Does it yeah. give away the whole movie? Maybe if you know stuff about Pokemon. <laughs> but we don't. We don't. Mm. Uh, Mewtwo, I know, turns up in it, who's like a genetically engineered Pokemon. Yeah, so this one's more... This 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 trailer is much more action-packed than the previous one. action packed Yep. That's not an expression, is it? <laughs> no. Hmm. But this one, yeah, this one has more... I remember Mewtwo when they released... Po- was it called Pokemon the First Movie? Yes. Very is ambitious. Is that the first one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. No, they did a few. Right. And they were all crap, probably. Okay. Oh, no, you're right. There was It was Pokemon the First Movie, and then it was Pokemon the Rise of Mewtwo or something like that. U2. Yeah, Mewtwo. The band. The band U2. Unrelated to the yeah. first one. That's yeah. an interesting tactic. Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, yeah, so... Um, Looks fun. And they they also released a, a Becoming Pikachu I didn't watch featurette it. with Ryan Reynolds. I saw it, but I went, I bet this is irreverent and funny. And it was irreverent and funny. So like Lively's it? in it. It's, oh, yeah, really? It's funny, yeah. Okay. Is she a character in uh, Detective Pikachu? No, but she is playing the character of his uh, long-suffering wife. Ah. As she does in real life. <laughs> That's correct. Boy and how. So yeah, no, I this I mean we've talked about it before, uh, as in it's probably gonna be the it could be, mm-hmm. I'd say probably, the best video game to movie adaptation of mm. all time. No, it does look very different from than the games, from what I can understand. Yes. But I don't understand much. <laughs> Mason, Ghostbusters news. Alright. I knew they were doing Stranger Things and they are. Uh, because oh, they've the, cast the, both Finn ca- Wolfhard? Yes. Yes. Uh from Stranger Things and uh-huh. it's chapter two, which is Stranger Things but with a clown. Mm-hmm. And Carrie Coon from Avengers Infinity War, who plays the girl of the villains. I don't know which one she is. Proxima something? Proxima Come on with Midnight, the horns. maybe? She gets mashed by a big rolling yes, wheel. Yes, that's right. Uh-huh. I love that scene. It's really great. It is good. Uh, and she's also in The Leftovers, which she's really right, good uh-huh. in that. Okay, cool. So, they are, it's just, this is strange. They're doing strange things. They're doing strange things, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, I mean, you're the biggest Ghostbusters fan on earth and love all things Ghostbusters. Not and true and not true. And continue to support every endeavor that they partake, None of these things are and true. And you'll give it 100% and a thumbs up on a will you see it on a rotten tomato. I can't do that anymore. So my entire oh, plan has no. fallen by the wayside. So I can't. I, so it's it's a real house of cards. Now I can't do any of those things. They've really things. impeded on your freedom of speech. I really like the first one. Yes, you do. I did watch a video about it though recently. And? And? It's a mo- it, it, it turns out there's there's nothing. It's a comedy, but none of the characters have an arc in it. Like it's a it's a movie where nobody there's not there's no there's no themes in the movie. That's just, it's, it's, yeah, not it's, a, just, it's not about anything. They just nobody get, learns anything. No. Nobody becomes a better person. Well, that's evident from the start of the second one. Yeah. Right. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah. Doesn't Bill Murray learn things in the second one because he wants to be a good dad or something? I doubt it. They all get covered in slime. Yeah, that that that's an arc. that's a theme. I think that's an arc. Well, this, no, this I mean the second one even has more. And the second theme, the, the second the the second movie theme is basically we should all get together and love one another. Yeah, that's the and be positive. New York, the, yeah. specifically New York. New York should yeah. stop throwing shit at each other in the subway. <laughs> that's right. People in New York. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, Ghostbusters. Yep. Is it, are we calling it Ghostbusters three? Because that was, that's a real... It's probably called Ghostbusters, the new crew or something. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, but they could just call it that, yes. Yeah. Do you think people would like it if it was Ghostbusters 3 and the ghost doing the three? Uh, maybe. The ghost doing the three. He's doing the shocker. <laughs> <laughs> that would be edgy. Yeah, it would, wouldn't it? Edgy yeah. and rad. Uh-huh. Uh, 
Yeah, like they're doing Stranger Things mm. because everybody is. Yeah. And what better time to cash in on Stranger Things? Then years after. <laughs> a year after? When? Four to five years after. Yeah. Well, by the time it rolls around. Yeah, that's Stranger true. Things was 2016, was it? Yeah, something like that. Let me just quickly check that. Maybe 2017. 2016, yeah. Wow. Mm. There you go. Doesn't time just fly when you're thinking about the, the, the Stranger Things franchise? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. More news. Okay, Because this is all news all the time. Rami Malek is in talk to play the villain in Bond 25. Oh, A man Shatterhand. so little that Daniel Craig could break him in half. Absolutely. Such as the villain in Bond, uh, the water's oil, and it's worth a lot. Quantum of Solace. Quantum of... this. Drink this oil in the desert. <laughs> okay, <laughs> quickly on, on Quantum of Solace. Yes. I don't hate it. I'm a Quantum of Solace apologist. I recently rewatched it because they're all on streaming now in yeah. Australia. One of, that, one of our streaming services had just put them all back up. Did you watch Casino Royale and then straight Quantum of Solace? Yes, I did. And? I still, I don't think that I... It's not I, as good. I'm no. not saying it's as good. Uh-huh. But things that was written by Daniel Craig during the writer's strike, strike on yeah. set. Yeah, that's true. I think it's okay. It's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. It's a it's a it's a it's a little weedy man. Yeah. A little weedy crooked man with a crowbar <laughs> fighting James Bond. In an exploding hotel. A, yeah, that's right. Every room has a gas cylinder that if you if you kick it, the, the room explodes or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> happens in the end of anyway, that. Rami Malik. No, sorry, just quickly. Yes. At the end, James Bond is like, You've been a bad frog man, a crooked little frog man. Yes. I'm going to leave you in the desert. You're going to get thirsty? Here's a can of oil. And yeah. then later they're like, we found him in the desert with half a bloody gallon of oil in his stomach. If that was me, I'd be like, you think I'm going to carry this fucking can of oil across the desert? <laughs> right. I'd just leave it. Just leave it. <laughs> yeah, but you'd be like, oh, but one swig for the road though, eh? <laughs> glum, 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 glum. <laughs> you know, that's you. Maybe. You it, can't resist. It would have been. You be- can't resist that black gold. But that Texas tea. <laughs> that would have mm. been better though. If James James Bond oil, threw it that to him, is. Oil, yes, I get it. James Bond threw it to him, and he just cracked it in front of him. Oh yeah, like he's just like fuck it, and he just drinks it in front of him. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be pretty cool. That's a power play. Yeah. yeah. Did you know Rami Malek has a twin brother named Sammy Malek? Does he really? He really does. Does he look like him? Somewhat. It's like a Brad well, Pitt. Br- it's like a Brad Pitt Brad Pitt's brother situation. Like they're ninety percent of the way there. But it's not quite. Wait, what's Rami Malek's brother's? No, Sammy what, Malek. What's Brad Pitt's brother's name? Can't can't remember. Yeah, they, you know he does. He looks like if Rami Malek wasn't an actor. Yeah, exactly. It was just yeah. a regular man. That's right, exactly. Man, imagine being Brad Pitt's brother. That'd be rad. It would be rad. Be Brad Pitt. Rad Pitt. Yeah, he's kind of. He's not unattractive. But that's the thing. He could also be like <laughs> a Brad Pitt impersonator. Oh, we're talking about Brad. We're talking about Brad Pitt's Sorry. brother now. Oh yeah, whoever. I'm talking about Ra- Rami Malek's brother. Yeah, could be like he's very much like a like if you Rami Malek is a is a leading man. Yeah, Sammy Malik could be like mm. like a Jake Johnson character, like in a new yes, girl. Like totally. he, he could be like uh he's like handsome but he's also a bit quirky kind of thing. You yes, know? yes. He could be that guy. That's I don't it. know if he's an actor or something. But. Right. I I get told I look I've got that I look like Jake Johnson and so I'm just a just an average looking nobody of a human <laughs> being. That's the spirit. Yeah, I appreciate that. I like Jake Johnson. I watched Spider Verse again the other day with Claire. Yeah. It's a fucking great movie, it's man. It's pretty good. Yeah, that is dynamite. I showed Claire as <laughs> That's well. That's just dynamite. It really is, though. Had Claire not seen it before that? No. Ooh. I was like, you got to watch this. And she's like, I want to watch Ben in Ben is Back. It's about Julia Roberts' son comes back and he's sad and filled with heroin. I'm like, I'm not doing that. Yeah, Claire. right. Uh-huh. I want to watch a movie about a spider man or woman. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, Rami Malek. And also, it's this is Lupita Nyong'o's rep say she likely won't be in Bond 25. Right, So okay. that was the rumor. She was going to be in it. Okay. Yes. There's the woman to replace Bond's newly dead wife? Correct, yes. Interesting. <laughs> no, soon to be dead wife. Soon She's not dead that's yet. That's right. Sorry, I should say that. Uh, yeah, right. what do you think, though? Rami Malek is a bad guy. I mean, he's going to have a henchman anyway. Yeah, exactly. You need a you need a uh, an evil genius henchman, yep. and you need a big bruise, 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 I was going to say an bruiser. an evil genius villain with a bruiser of a... Yeah, like, of a, yeah. Of a Whatever, yeah. henchman, yeah. Great. I've well, nearly the, said a Bruce of a henchman. Just a, a real, real Bruce. A real you know? Bruce Campbell type. Yeah. Like Bruce Campbell. Mm. Okay, okay, so let's say Rami Malek is your is your squirrely little frogman villain. Sammy Malek is a teacher. Is he? Yeah. I just saw he did some stuff in Tanzania as well. Yeah, you're right. I did some stuff no, in Tanzania we as well, Mason. We get it. Yeah, right. We get it. Just, right. just, we a, get it. just right. six months of volunteer teaching oh, and stuff. God. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Came back broke than I'd ever been, Mason. But you know what? <laughs> yes. I was rich in experience. But not money, though. <laughs> Definitely Took not. Took you a long time to recover from that, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> okay, what about this? Bond villains. Yes. 
Who's what? What henchman do you do? Where do you oh, go? Do you think this is? Do you think this is going to be a remake henchman, or do you think it's a new henchman? No. What's the gimmick? Do you do? Oh, okay. Let me think. We've had steel thumbnails. Thumbs. <laughs> yes. We've had a man with jaws. Yes. Um, We've had a moonraker. Yep. Um, there was a, 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 a short man in a suitcase. Ankle flamethrowers. Mm, that's good. But that I feel like anybody could do that. <laughs> You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, no, I get you it. You don't need okay. to have a particular thing about you. Yeah, okay. Maybe right. you don't have feet and they've been replaced by flame. But throwers. that was the lady from Oh, yeah, Kingsman. she didn't have feet either. She didn't have feet either. That's a good one. Yeah, it was a, good, it's a really good one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we had a man with diamonds in his face. Yeah, what was his power again? He had a diamond face. <laughs> he glistened in the sun. That's right. Okay, mm, all right. Uh, it's tough though, isn't it? Because you can, like... Stone hands. Well, that's well, that's shatter hand. That's supposedly what this one's. What about called. a man with a very broken hand? <laughs> that's right. He distracts you with it. <laughs> See, that's the, help. Like, <laughs> here's the twist. Okay, it. here's the twist. Here's the twist. Okay, so we think it's Rami Malek as the little. He's the little genius man. Yeah. And then we have this enormous like Dave Batista style like brute character. Great. But he's shatter hand. Yes. And one of his hands is broken. He's like, ah, oh, ah. <laughs> uh, can you just ooh. Ah, uh, and then Rami Malek sneaks up behind Bond and ducks down. And then, then Shatterhand just pushes him with over. his good hand. With his good hand, he pushes him or over. Or maybe he goes to push him over with his Shatterhand. He's like, yeah. "Oh, yeah, that's right. I should get that. Yeah, I should get that." And then Rami Malek's like, "Oh, Shatterhand, yeah. you've done it again." But he won't let him fix his Shatterhand. That's why he's working for him because it's a cool name. Yeah, but also like if you work for me for six months. Yep. Then I'll fix your shattered hand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. He's doing it for the shattered hand. Oh, come on. Oh. oh. Bond must have shattered his hand, right? Maybe not. No, I reckon maybe M shattered his hand many years ago and he's oh, back yeah. for revenge against all of MI6. Yeah. Ooh. Shattered hand. Guys, you did this to me. Ooh. <laughs> ah. We have to talk about uh, <sighs> the Oscars. Oh, yes. I guess. I guess. Sure. Uh, here's some highlights. Bohemian Rhapsody got best editing somehow. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, I haven't seen it. No, I also haven't I, seen it. And I won't. But I have seen, and again, that it, scene. it went around Twitter, and apparently it has not been edited at all, but it's something like 120 edits in two minutes or yeah. something like that. Like, it's just character to character to character to character. Reactions. Reaction shots. It's just cutting to people that aren't talking. And yeah. Just, because apparently... You need equal squeak. All, screen all time the or all the uh, surviving members of Queen required a certain amount of screen time. Yeah, and they got them, didn't they? Yeah, no matter what. Yes. So that was kind of incredible. Yeah. So I guess maybe you can get it for most edits. Yes, maybe that's what it is. Uh, Into the Spider Verse one best animated. Cool. I kind of thought it wouldn't because it's just because it came yeah. out pretty late in the year uh-huh. and it's not Pixar. But apparently, uh, Pixar or who who makes who made Wreck It Ralph. Disney, Disney, but not Pixar. No, so apparently Disney already printed off best animated movie winner like little stickers Great. for for Wreck It Ralph, and they sent them to various like came, you know targets and really? whatever. So they so I've seen photos of just like best actor, uh, best uh, animated feature winners, and some people just put them up anyway on Wreck It Ralph. Yeah, on for Wreck It Ralph, or like on the shelves. They should put it on the Spider Verse. Yes, so Spider Verse DVD. So I think it's only a digital at uh-huh. the moment, but. That's great. Yeah, so That's it's so Wreck-It great. Ralph, blah, blah, blah. So, <laughs> yeah. It actually says Wreck-It Ralph on it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a picture. Of, it's like the Wreck-It Ralph box wow. cover, but it's got like, winner, best animated movie. Get into it. Yeah. I haven't seen that one yet. Neither have I. Because I don't need to see a man walk past the Snapchat icon. I don't <laughs> need to see a man. I've seen heaps. <laughs> yeah, that's you right. Got your, had your quota? You had your fill? Yeah, that's right. Fair enough. Uh, Black Panther also won three. For best score, best costume, pro- be- uh, uh, costume design and production design, Ooh. which is, makes it the comic book movie with the most Oscars. There you I go. Believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and people love the Green Book one, so people were just wrapped. <laughs> They're people not though, are they? Mad. People, no. Spike Lee didn't like it. Yeah. Most people didn't like. It. I think there was some good stuff and some not good stuff, as there is every year. Though people also say that it worked better without the hosts because it just, just moved to the clip. I oh, see. I was not even aware there were no hosts. I actually watched some of is it. Is there a voiceover or something? They just were like, and now presenting the award for whatever, here's an actor that you know. Cool. And they come out and they go, this year's whatever is, uh, the film is <laughs> I think fun. it's whatever. And, you know, Hollywood, it's wow. ideals and blah blah But don't you, don't you love Seth MacFarlane? Like, 
running through the history of cinema or whatever happens in the intro to the Oscars? I haven't seen that, but no. Okay, great. I don't like that. Great, good. I don't, uh, but no, I actually Neil did watch Patrick it. Harris. Yeah, he's all right. Okay, I'm good. At times, good. Uh, but I actually watched some of it, and mm-hmm. it was fine because I happened to be home and no one was home, which has never happened. Okay, and so I you were like, I've got to watch something, anything. Yeah, I'm gonna watch a live thing, and I won't be interrupted for a change. <laughs> Any thoughts? Did on... you and you did it? Did you do it while eating over the sink? You better believe I did, Mason. Good. That's where I do all my thinking and eating. Yeah, and Oscar watching. Mm. Okay, uh, last bit of news: uh, Steven Spielberg is rallying against having streaming service movies, in particular Netflix, being eligible for best films and such at yep. the Oscars. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, the quote from Amblin uh, Entertainment says: "Steven feels strongly about the difference between the streaming and theatrical situation. Uh, he'll be happy if others will join his campaign when that comes up uh, for the Academy Board of Governors meeting." Mm. Uh, look, he's from a different era of filmmaking. Yep, but who cares? Yeah, look, I can't. I can't. Look, I, I get what he's saying. I but... kind of see. I do kind of see his point. And I mean, a lot of a lot of movies only get a theatrical release so they can be nominated yes, for Oscars. That's so. That's yeah. the rules. So well, that's the thing. And like yeah. a lot of the Netflix movies, also like Roma, I believe, yeah. only got a limited release, and then it was put on Netflix. Why is that a big deal though to release it in cinemas and then a week later put it on streaming? Yeah, right. Who cares? I also say that. Who cares? A movie is a movie. Yeah. And also, I don't want to go to the movies. I want to watch movies at home. Yeah. You know, last time I went to the movies, Mason. Oh, yeah. There was uh, two old women in my seat, both of them piled on top of each other. Oh. And they were sitting there and I'm like, excuse me, as it always does. It seems to happen every time. Yeah, now. right. Uh-huh. Every time this happens, I've got a new boring story about it. I'm ready. But Does this end? See, that's the thing. One of these days, it's going to end differently. It really is. This one did, though. Okay. But, uh, I go, and they beat me up. <laughs> Pummeled me. I've got a shattered head. Uh, <laughs> ah, <laughs> ooh. Ooh. <laughs> but I go, excuse me, you're in my seat. And I show them the ticket. They're like, oh, sorry. We just don't know where to sit. And I nearly went, you know, it's on your ticket. But I'm yeah, like, right. this is not mine. They tell you. They, yeah. It's they the- say you're in the middle. Yeah. Here. It's just not, I'm not teaching that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh-huh. I went to Tanzania for six yeah. months, Mason. I lost a lot of money. Look, I don't know my will... teaching there. No. Look, they'll they'll learn. Basically, they'll just just follow the system of just keep being told to move until you end up in a couple of seats where you're no longer being told to move. That's your seats. <laughs> yes, that's right. Pretty great. Pretty great. So, but no. So, do you think even well, let's say streaming movies don't go to cinemas? Yes. Should they still be eligible, or do they get their own awards? The streamies. The best webisodes. Look, I think... And the again, MTV Best Kiss or whatever. What, I don't know. Like, are I they think, eligible for that? I think... I'll stop. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. That's, yeah. Best Bros. <laughs> best so bros. Are they eligible for a Spike TV Best Bro <laughs> Award or whatever it is? Yes. Well, that's because that's the thing. Like, I, th- I feel like the difference between like a, a movie released on Netflix and a cinematic movie, mm. I think there might be like a... Um, a what do you call it? You know, a thing? You know when it's like a, a Cheech and Chong, a bias, a there's toe a bi- jam and earl, a toe jam and earl. You know when there's a bias towards oh well, oh well if it's on Netflix, it's probably kind of cheaply yeah. produced and blah blah blah. And, and sometimes probably, it is, and sometimes it is. But I think if you are making it on, if you if you are spending big Hollywood budget, but even then that's not a that's not a requirement that a movie is Oscar worthy. You can do what you can make a movie on the cheap, yes. on video, you know, yes. on on old outdated equipment, and if it's a good movie and it mm. gets a theatrical release. Then you know, yeah. Why not? I think it's also un. It can be. I think it's unfair to release a film that's probably not going to do well and have it bomb, and you lose a bunch of money when you could sell it to Netflix. Yeah, right. And get a wider distribution. And that's also a thing. Like a lot. Again, some of these movies that are Oscar eligible, they put them on in New York and LA. Yeah. And Chicago, or whatever, and then. If you're outside of that area, you can't watch can't these Oscar-nominated yeah. movies because they didn't get a wide enough release. Yep. Whereas if it goes to Netflix, you can watch it anywhere in the world you happen to be. And I do. Cool, cool. Often I don't. Oh, yes. Did you see Roma? No. I also didn't see yeah, Roma. But it's supposed to be very good, Mason. Yeah, but sad. It's a sad yeah, movie. Yeah, sad. You know, movies can be sad. I don't sad. have time for a sad movie. No, I'll just watch Spider-Verse again. Yeah, I don't know. It's... it's because And it wasn't he also slow to... To pick up digital and stuff like that, but Something now he like uses that, yeah. digital, so you know yeah. he's just. I think he might change his tune. And there's also no doubt his his track record 
and his contributions to cinema uh-huh. and he's he's done a lot of charitable stuff probably yeah i don't know that for a fact uh-huh. but i'm sure he probably has yeah he's always wearing a hat he's wearing a baseball hat yeah and that i like i think i'm also like i think a lot of this has to do with that feeling of the that at the movies like the 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 yeah. feeling of being at the movies and it's an event and it's a special thing sure, yeah. and i think a lot of maybe the bias against netflix nominations for oscars is just like well you can't go to the cinemas and you know sit down with your friends yeah. and and what have you and and all that but get a popcorn or a choc top and a pizza and if a you're pizza. you yeah that's right yeah no, get I pizza for the whole crowd yeah yeah but i just think don't there's just yeah there's different platforms and obviously it's if it's a movie that goes to youtube and it's broken up into seven parts or whatever <laughs> maybe that's where you draw the line or yeah, whatever. Right. but uh-huh. if it's a it's a if it's a film yeah I don't see the problem. I know I said I don't care, but I guess I do. Or do I? Yeah, I mean, I I guess it's just an issue of finding the line by which it is considered a proper movie. Yeah. Or like, because again, like you can you can make a a cheap movie and it screens in two on two screens and then it wins wins an Oscar. Yeah. Because it's just the quality of the filmmaking is high. The artist probably. Probably the artist. Probably. Probably life is beautiful. Probably. Probably that one. <laughs> Something black and white and sad. Roma. Probably. 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 <laughs> you know. I get it. I, don't, I, I just I just don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. Although I did read because all this came up, I I read some some various tweets and articles about how apparently because Netflix have this sort of you know the the because you know then there are a lot of Netflix original series. You know, and they've kind of got a, uh, they've kind of got a lock on this kind of industry. Mm. You know, streaming director people's homes that are, like they don't pay very well, like they don't pay actors in in shows very well and stuff like that. Okay, I, I know, I'm sure. Like, I know syndicated stuff can generally do pretty well, but no, yeah, right. that's, I didn't know that. Yeah. But more in the sense of, I think there was yeah. a there was an actor saying that she was on a was on a Netflix series, mm. and you know, she was a. She was fifth on the call sheet, so she's like the fifth most important character. Yeah. And she was being paid like $980 an episode or something oh, like really? that. really? What was Whereas, that for? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'll have to look it up. But, yeah. you know, in, in in the position she'd be in, if she was on a, like an NBC sitcom, she'd be being, being paid yeah. like $30,000 an episode. There's a standard rate. There's a standard. There's like yeah. a, you negotiate a certain rate, but on this she was being paid like actor scale. Yeah. No, even I, though even though they're making a lot of money I off this sort of like stuff. That, yeah. So she's like, okay, well, I get paid $980 and after I give... You know, after taxes and after I give a cut to my agent or my manager, I'm making like 200 bucks a week yeah. to be the fifth person on a TV series. On a show that everybody's saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. So this is, uh, this is, a, this is a, a slash film article about... Okay. Uh, it says, uh, Netflix, ne- uh, streaming services are destroying Hollywood's middle class. So like... Now that they're now that they're doing like thirteen episodes of a show instead of like twenty two episodes, you know, writers aren't getting paid as much money. Uh, but this there's an actor named Alison Becker who was on Parks and Rec. She was Shauna Malway Tweep, who was the oh uh, yeah, I know her. Yeah, she yeah. was the TV host. Yeah. Uh, when she was on Parks and Rec, because she was a guest star, she got like somewhere between three and four thousand dollars a week. Sure. She started at three thousand, which is the guild minimum. Yeah. And they should have. And she wasn't away. a major role. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So on Netflix, she worked two days a week on a show. She got Lucifer? A, yes. I don't know. That. No, I don't oh, think it was, no, yeah. was Lucifer. Sorry, keep going. Uh, and she got paid a daily rate instead of a weekly one. Uh, she was never made a series regular despite being number five on the call sheet. Uh, actors who are regular members of the, uh, the cast to pay their rate. Uh, yeah, if I was on a network show like Community, I would have been paid as a series regular. But they, they didn't make me a series regular. They made me a recurring guest star and paid me a daily rate. So she was making $980 a week at Netflix. Oh, boo. That's not very good. Yeah. Huh. I know. Uh, her tweet says, I realize this isn't a smart move, business move to say publicly, but I'll take the risk as it needs to be said. I'm grateful for work, but Netflix, you really have to start paying your actors better wages. You have the money, make your numbers public, treat artists better. That's absolutely justified and mm. fair. And you're not a tiny web page, you're a massive streaming service. Some actors on Netflix shows have side jobs because they can't pay the bills even when they're on billboards. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. That is. Hmm. Well, I say let's cancel her. Just kidding. <laughs> she seems good. She sounds like a bit of a bloody wind if you yeah. ask me, Mason. Uh-huh. No, that's completely justified. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, Mason, that is all the news. Whoa. And bloody hell. Feels good, doesn't it? Feels good to have news. You know, it doesn't feel good, Mason. What's that? Somebody tearing through us. Oh, for what? Our opinions. Oh, tearing strips off us. Because Mason. Bloody hell. It is time for hate mail, but the hate has an eight in it. <sighs> the only segment of this show 
called that. Yes. But also where we read eight bits of hate mail from mm-hmm. the internet directed at us. Usually more me. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh huh. If it's... you want to dig a bit deeper and find some directed at me, I think you're definitely included in here. Don't okay, worry that's about good. that. It's just because it's YouTube. You know what I mean? Yeah, YouTube's got more yeah. hate. I feel. And normally, if it's often people will just like if you say something, they'll still come at me. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Yeah, because they can't tell. They think it's just one person talking. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but it's never eight pieces, and no. this week it is certainly that is certainly not true. Yes. Okay. I'm ready. So this is this has happened over a series of years. It would seem. From oh. s- uh, uh, someone called Scott Reacher, and it starts as regularly as anything. It's probably related to Jack Reacher. Right? He could very well be. I, think so too. I hope he's not as dangerous, Mason. Mm. You know, a man who can eat a steak and eggs and break you with one arm or whatever. <laughs> That's right. While eating the steak and eggs, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just upending that plate of steak and eggs into his gigantic <laughs> maw. <laughs> Scott Reacher says, "But what if I want to see Year One? I want to see Year One." That's a lot of video about what something about Batman movies. Okay, cool. Next one says. Someone please tell me where the Skeletor dance video is from. I'm just painting a picture. I'm setting the scene. Wait, are these okay? separate comments? These are separate comments. Okay, so this is all in the one video. No, this is a different video over a series of times. Oh, I see, right. you can click on a person's name and you can get the whole... Okay, right. You, or you can run a search so we can get the whole back catalog. So this is this is back in time. That's yes. the first thing he ever said was, yes. what if I want to see Batman you want? Okay. And then, what's the Skeletor dance from? And then this next one says, this comes across as very nitpicky and this episode feels very rushed. It was on a video about the most pointless CGI in movies. Mm -hmm. The next one is talking trash about Cutthroat Island. Real cool. Thumbs down. (laughs) And did he give you a thumbs (laughs) down? Gave me a thumbs down. Okay, right. That's great. Did we say something mean about Cutthroat Island? I did in the review for Pirates of the Caribbean 5, I guess. I don't remember that. I haven't seen that movie. But it bombed. Spectacularly, I hated it. Yeah, I remember (laughs) that. Yeah. uh, Next movie. Talking trash about Iron Fist? Not cool. That's, Thumbs down? that's a video where we talked about how Iron Fist is a dummy in his own series. Yeah, right. Uh, next video did is... Did he give you a thumbs down for that? Yes, he did. Next what's, video... Hang on, what was, the, what was the thing he said? He keeps repeating himself. He says... Talking trash about. Talking trash about. Okay, yeah. right. Uh, next one... In Do the... you think that's his catchphrase? It might. He has a Not different... on my watch. Talking trash about this guy? Not on my watch. You think that's his catchphrase, but he has a different catchphrase. Oh, I'm phrase, ready for this. It'll become very apparent. Next one is on five franchises that need to die from that video. He says... How about five reasons Mr. Sunday movies need to be stopped? Emoji of a hand doing the stop. Yes. Uh And does he provide five? No. Lazy. I agree. At least you're making videos. (laughs) You know? I mean, you should stop. But the fact that you continue to make them is at least positive. You could at least type them. It's not that difficult, is it? Yeah, right. Exactly. Next one, uh, this is on the Dark Universe is Dead uh, yes. video. Someone who should be dead, Mr. Sunday Movies. <laughs> no, this one's okay. okay. Mummy was a disappointment, but I still have hopes for other films to improve. Mm-hmm. Next video on Geostorm, where we talk about Geostorm and the death of those um, that type of film. Uh-huh. Talking trash about Twister, really cool Mr. Sunday Movies. Thumbs down. Next video uh, is the one that I made about uh, with the lightsaber, with that lightsaber ad that I made for that Oh, VR yeah, thing? for like Jedi VR. Yeah. Thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks like a scumbag too. The circle is complete. <laughs> what I like about that one is because, first of all, he has made an assumption there that you've read all of his comments because he's like, looks like a scum. Like, he's not talking to anybody. He's like, looks like a scumbag too. Yeah. But here's the twist you have now read all his comments. I have. I stumbled across one, and, yeah. and often I'll be like, what's this? Is this a tip of something? Oh, this guy's good. Yeah. <laughs> this guy. This guy is the Mr. Glass of, of your existence because he is he has planted a seed and yeah. he's woven it through. This is like when you when you go when somebody's like if you look at all the Pixar movies, it's you, every single one it spells Happy Birthday. If you watch them, you know it's one of those things. Yeah. And then the people are like that's amazing. It's this guy. He's just like <laughs> he's woven a little thread of discontent through all your videos. Boy, has he! This one's about a caravan of garbage. Uh, this guy complains about everything. Also, it's on a video that, of a game that I liked, but whatever. <laughs> uh, this one is about uh, every Easter egg in The Force and The Last Jedi. Mm-hmm. Mr. Sunday Movies equals scum. All capitals. <sighs> Each letter has a space between it. Is it because you're not responding to any of his? But I don't know. You don't know. That's right. Uh, this, that, that mean, this might make him very happy. I hope so. Unless he doesn't listen to the podcast, which is quite likely. Which is very likely. Uh, this one is on my video, Star Wars is Ruined, where I... Just talk about every. It, it's not a. It's a criticism of the Last Jedi, but it's not real. Uh, real. It's just like a going back through and picking a dumb thing out of every Star Wars. Yeah, film right. You can it's, you can complain about anything. It's not a real video. Yeah. It's a satire. It's a sat. Very good. Mm. I said, Mister Sunday Movies is ruined. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, you're lucky. 
you didn't you're like you didn't create a video called uh star wars is cancelled because then you would have been, I've been canceled. canceled and you know if somebody says you're cancelled you're out right this is all the easter eggs for ready player one you missed escape from new york unsubscribed next video <laughs> avengers infinity to oyster eggs mr scumbag movies footloose isn't the greatest movie ever me unsubscribed thumbs down wow you double unsubscribed <laughs> you did. Wow. Can you tell if somebody subscribes and unsubscribes? I think you can. Because uh, if you go, if you look into that metadata and he hasn't resubscribed <laughs> and then unsubscribed again, <laughs> he's a liar. Uh, next video on the best 80s action movies. Temple of Doom doesn't have problems. Mr. Scumbag Movies has problems. Ooh, Winking face. Unsubscribes. <laughs> Every, uh, Deadpool Easter egg video. Okay, here's the thing. Winky face. <laughs> yes. Hypothetically speaking, it, do you think mm. that he... Because you know sometimes... You know, you know, often what happened with in podcasting mm. is like we have a bit of back and forth banter and we have a sure. bit of fun, and I'm like, oh, you're a dickhead, and you're like, oh, no, you're a dickhead, yeah, dickhead and then yeah, somebody yeah. will come up to me and like, you guys should kill yourselves, <laughs> ha ha, we're friends now, <laughs> and you're like, that's not cool, that's not, we don't that's, know you, <laughs> we don't know you at all. Um, do you think that maybe that's what this is? Do you think he's like, it could very well be you think that? He's yeah. like, hey, he's building a rapport. I think maybe he's building a rapport. We have built a pretty good rapport. I this is on so. my Deadpool two Easter egg video. When Mr. Scumbag Movies makes fun of Bambi, thumbs down. Oh. Next video. Did you make fun of Bambi? Yes, I, I did. I don't remember a lot of the stuff I say. Yeah. His mother is dead, His mother's James. dead. I know that. God I've never damn. seen it also. Wow. Uh, this is one of the video on the future of Star Wars. Boba Fett versus Maul would definitely be something worth seeing. Hmm. Uh, that next would be <laughs> quite impressive, actually. Now that I... Hmm. <laughs> Actually, pretty pretty good because uh, one's got the jetpack and the lasers, and the other's a double lightsaber. That's right. They're both masters of their particular fighting styles. That would be very interesting. Agreed. You cannot argue with that. I don't. You cannot argue with whatever this guy's name is. I've already forgotten. <laughs> Scott Reacher. Scott Reacher. Uh, next video on stop making Batman movies. He wrote, "How about stop making YouTube videos?" Scott, is, is that Scott, directed at you or yes, directed at everybody? That's no, me. It's got, no, but, no, it's how got about five everybody? likes as well, to Whoa. be fair. Yeah, so, you know. He's building... Look, he's, <laughs> he may not be building a rapport with you, but he's building a rapport with your subscribers. And you better watch out, because eventually... The next one's going to be more like Mr. Dumbass Movies, and it's going to have 200,000 likes. <laughs> and, then, and then they're going to be like, they'll, he's going to create a, a different... This groundswell yeah, of... <laughs> yeah. He's going to create a, a counter channel called Mr... Reacher movies. Yes. <laughs> and and he's going to ha- he's going to take all his subscribers. He may have uh the, the movement may have lost lost some, some momentum because this comment yeah. talking trash about Smallville, huh? Only has two thumbs up. Ooh. And every comment from here, the seven or so that are left have no thumbs up. Ooh. So I think he had his moment. He had, he had his, his moment, he had his shiny moment, yeah. He didn't. Cuz you got, it's all about timing, isn't totally it? You it get is, in yeah. first and then yeah. people see that comment and be like I was going to say Mr. Sunday movies kill yourself, <laughs> but before I do that I'm going to like this comment. <laughs> Correct. Uh, in every version of Spider-Man, uh, from Spider-Verse, he wrote, it's sacrilege what he says about Spider-Man 2099. More like Mr. Scumbag movies. Ooh. Uh, Aquaman is lame. Definitely needs to change his channel to Mr. Scumbag movies. <laughs> uh, people, uh. people don't hate Clue, you misinformed twats. That's you. You're it on that oh, one. Oh, nice. Cool. <laughs> Mr. We, if I recall, we mentioned Clue mm. in a, just a... A neutral way, I believe. I think in Bandersnatch, I think I said it didn't do well critically or commercially, which it didn't. Great. Also, I haven't seen it. Yep. Also, it's probably crap. Mr. Scumbag's movies likes to talk trash about Aquaman, huh? I like Aquaman. I think it's yeah, I like case. Aquaman, yeah. <laughs> Change of pace. Avi Arid equals scum. Ooh. <laughs> wow. Second last one. The Neo scene is badass. This is from recently we talked about the oh, bad CGI. Oh, CGI, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. You are poorly mis- misinformed, Mr. Scumbag Movies, one word. <laughs> and the last one is uh, from Marvel Ultimate Alliance, where we made fun of that video game. Yeah. A lot of people, by the way. <laughs> if a lot of, that's their favorite game of all time, yeah. apparently. I stand by it. Yeah, I stand by it too. <laughs> okay, it's official time this time. Mr. Scumbag Movies, it's time to stop. It's official. It's locked in. Well, look, we had a good run, didn't we? But I guess if it's time to stop. <laughs> it's over. Yeah, I love the unsubscribed. Yep, he's he's bailing. He's he's. <laughs> oh, this is so. This guy's so good. I hope he continues forever. <laughs> Me too. He didn't, so the, so he's kept up until the most recent video. Yes. So there's more to That's come. That's the which first I one really I really appreciate. Yeah. yeah, this is good because that because he's got he's got a couple of catchphrases. Yeah, talking trash about blank. Yep, he, it should be. I don't think so. <laughs> 
He's got a nickname for me. Mr. Scum- Scumbag Movies. But it's tied into my YouTube name as well. I don't know if yeah. you noticed that. Uh-huh. It's not It's not an accident. If somebody could knock up a Mr. Scumbag Movies <laughs> t-shirt <laughs> really quickly. <laughs> Maybe it says, talking. how about talking trash about Mr. Scumbag Movies? I don't think so. I'd like that a lot. <laughs> me too. All right, that's that safe. And it's up. your face coming out of a bin. <laughs> yes. Could I have a banana peel on my head? Yes, you can. Great. Yes. Well, it's up to the artist, but I hope Sure, so. yeah. It's, obviously, it's creative interpretation. Wow. Yeah. He's, that guy's probably fine, right? Yeah, I like him. Good. Yeah. Uh, and you know what it's time for then? Oh, uh, it's time for what we're reading? What we're going to read. Ooh. I'm doing the theme. What are we reading today? <laughs> what are you <laughs> reading? I watched Isn't It Romantic or Isn't This so Romantic? So that's the Re- is Rebel Wilson. Yes. Rom com. She, she, she gets transported into the magical world of rom coms. Is that what happens in that movie? And uh, Liam Hemsworth is in it. Is that why you watched it? No, I did was okay. on Netflix All and right I watched it. All right. he's, he's very good though. Yeah. You know what? The the rom com kind of went away for a while, and now it's yeah. back. And it's there's some good stuff like either quite like Crazy Rich Asians. I, yeah, I right. like this. It's not like this is changing the game, and I've never seen anything like it, and uh-huh. whatever. It's just like it's just good to watch something like this occasionally. You know what I mean? I don't have to. Talk about it in depth, and it's just a bit of light fun. There's some good jokes, and yeah, right. Uh-huh. You know, like Rebel Wilson, I, I like in things that she's in. She's good in uh, Ghost Rider. Yep, she's good in that, and she's good in the Pitch Perfect movies. And she's good in that Australian TV show about the fake Big Brother house that she was in in the early 2000s or something. Remember that one, The Wedge? I think she was in The Wedge. I don't think she was also in Fat Pizza as Tula. All right, okay. Yeah, <laughs> she's good in those Uber Eats ads. Probably. Yep. She's good in... No, she's not in Bridesmaids, is she? I don't think so. I bet she'd be good in that. Yeah. She'd fit right into that cast. Uh-huh. What'd you watch, though? I haven't watched anything this week, I don't think. That cannot be true. No, I... Are I, you doing early morning I did shifts, early shifts, so yeah. I've, I've spent just uh, working and then going home to bed. So you watched The Road. <laughs> yeah, I did watch The Road, but I, I do have Jupiter Ascending queued up on Netflix. because You're it's not going to watch Jupiter Ascending. I think Ascending. I might watch... I'm going to watch five here. minutes of Jupiter Ascending. Okay, that I believe. Yeah, I could watch five minutes of that. Doesn't he have like magnetic jet boots or something? Yeah, and that's he's a dog man. That's pretty cool. And he's a dog man. I've been watching a lot of videos from Patrick Willems on, on YouTube. Oh, yeah, he's good, yeah. yeah. We've been watching two two guys who've been doing videos for a long time, but I've only just discovered, which is Patrick Will, uh, Willems, yes. uh, who does movie... They, they both do movie to, uh, like analysis. Yeah. And uh, Dan Olsen, who's folding ideas. Okay, I've never heard of that both, one. Both great, okay. both enjoyable. But now it's I'm at the point where I've sort of... With with uh, folding ideas, I've sort of caught up. Yes. So now I'm just like, put out another video. Put out another <laughs> video. Talking trash about putting out another video, are you? you Mr. Scumbag Movies, just give him that name. Yeah, nice. That's fine. In a way, we're all Mr. Scumbag Movies, Correct. aren't we? I've so been watching those, yeah. I just, I just got this on Twitter because we like to throw it out there, what we're going to talk about during the week. Mm-hmm. Uh, Luke says, can you please mention Titanfall 2, James? I love that, uh, that game and I want people to see, to see the geat beast of the game. Geet Bess? Greatness? Is that supposed might to be, be greatness, yeah, sure. Or Geet Beast. It might be the Geet Beast. Uh, it is a great game, and it's got mm. a wonderful single-player campaign, yeah, right. and you should play it if you haven't. It's probably super cheap now as well. Mm. You should get it, actually. Maybe or I'll borrow my copy. Okay, but you don't then. like to borrow stuff because you're afraid you're never going to return it, don't you? That's correct, yes. I feel that's... If I gave it to you, you'd yes. take it. I'd take it, sure. But you wouldn't do a borrow. But you'd never give it to me. I absolutely would not. That's what I thought. Mm. Your Mr. What about, Scumbag what's a, what's a, movies. Yeah, I know, right? What's the deal with Anthem? What What is that? What, uh, that okay, game? in a nutshell, yes, uh, it's a looter shooter, which is basically a game that goes forever, and you just grind away collecting stuff and upgrading your guns and different colors. Does it have a plot? So, yeah, there's a thing, and it takes over a thing, but you're the whatever, and you need to get in. Because <laughs> it looks good. Yeah, okay, so technically there's parts of it that are good, like the flying. Have and, you played it? or are you No, just... and I never okay. will. <laughs> okay, the then. flying and, uh, and some of the weapon stuff is good, but it's this empty world that mostly looks the same like it all it's either you're in a cave or you're flying past a mountain or whatever you're right and it's just and it's broken in terms of like the the systems that it's set up in place and it's it's they pay to get better stuff and uh, okay, it's, right. it, the load times go forever and it's basically everything that's wrong with these <laughs> ongoing live service video games right that have been coming out but the thing is there's been a lot of them yeah and Bioware, who made this, made like Knights of the Old Republic. They made Mass Effect series, mm-hmm. uh, which are beloved games. Yeah, right. And so people are like, what are they working on? You know, this is going to be their magnum opus. Of, yeah, right. But because they're a magnum opus. Thank you. But because it's <laughs> they're under the banner of EA, people are like, will they for, will they force to make this or yeah. whatever? And and will it just be loot boxes? Yeah, and yes, it is. And so this is, and this it's is... tanking 
hard. Oh, is this a single yeah. player game or is it? it mo- no, it's mostly one of those online oh, forever see, I don't, games. I don't there care is for a, any of that. Yeah. See, that's the thing because I I feel the same way about maybe this and like I also Destiny. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. it's it's also a worse version of Destiny. Yeah, because right. yeah. they look. I love the aesthetic of them, which is Agreed. this kind of yeah. like these kind of space warriors, and they've all got like capes and this like yeah. beautiful armor and all these they're all they all and look the scenery looks amazing yeah and they yeah. all look great and i'm like man what, what would a, imagine like a gigantic like space opera yes like kind of futuristic parallel universe mm. weird galaxy like that would be incredible but it's not that evidently. and you build a, a single player campaign around those pretty solid mechanics but that's yeah. why you should just play titanfall 2 okay because if you want a weird future with Cool robot. What if I want a cape though? You don't get that. I'm sorry. I want to fly around with a cape, but I'm also a robot. You will not. Oh. You will not. Okay, so don't play Anthem, is what you're saying. Absolutely not. That's Unless okay. you can get it for free, in which yeah. case, still don't. <laughs> well, I haven't played it. Yeah. Some people are probably really loving it, but yeah, the general yeah. consent. I've watched a lot of videos on it, and because I just, I'm hoping this is the turning point for video games where they just release a video game and you play it. And if you want to unlock something, yeah. you just do a thing in the game to it. Like, Spider-Man PS4 yep. was a lot of that game I liked is because do you want this suit? We'll do this mission and this mission and find and this you thing get it, and yeah. you get it. It's not like pay 20 bucks and you get the super duper whatever. Yeah, or whatever. right. Uh. And there's paid DLC, but I don't mind because it gives you an extra however yeah. many hours. And there was things in that game where it's like, okay, if you want the, if you want the, you know, the Spider-Man, if you want the original spider like mm. the, 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 the track pants and, and hoodie Spider-Man suit. You've got to take photographs of all the stuff. Yeah, and it tells you what you need to do yeah. specifically. But also, so, like, yeah. if you do that, you learn stuff about Spider-Man. Exactly. You go, oh, okay, that's his first web shooter, yeah. and that's where he went to his first date with Mary Jane or whatever. Like, you take photos of stuff, and it's a learning. It's not just, like, just grind and grind and grind, and eventually you get yeah. it, you know, kind of thing. The problem is, though, because these games, when they do well, they Except make... Like pigeon catching. That was yeah, a that's nightmare. Like, that fucking... No. Yeah. no. Thank you. Oh, do you get better? Once you get the hang of it. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Uh-huh. But... These games, when they do well, the model is the most successful form of video games you can make. Like oh, Grand Theft Auto yeah. Online, which is, it's an always online uh, forever experience and whatever. Uh-huh. It's We've talked about it, it's the most profitable piece of media of all time. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. But because there's a lot of these now, and this is a worse version of uh, Destiny and the one where you're in the, the city and it's crumbling or whatever, and you're... You, you dudes with guns and you've got to run through a little crumbly city little crumbly city what's that one called people like also a lot of these games they release them and they're not finished and yeah, they're like right. well we're going to build it around what the community likes and then in six months we're going to make new campaigns and raids that you can come and yeah, do right. but just make a ga- also they've been working on this for like six years I don't know how it's this bad right. it's, it's, and especially from such a good company and even like the storyline because Bioware are known for their storylines yeah, right. those Star Wars games are the, some of those well regarded yeah, yeah. Star Wars stuff that's been ever made oh uh-huh. And I, I don't know what... Is it because a company like EA makes them overcommit? Yes. I, well, re- I reckon it's like, well, make it... Remember your last game? Make it 10 times as big as that. Yeah. And they're like, sure thing. And they're like, yeah. but if you don't, don't worry about it because mm. we can fix it afterwards. So they have a deadline, but they also have no deadline. Yes. So they can be like, yeah, just we'll ship it half finished and you can fix it later. Exactly. There's a lot of that. Mm. And I, I'm, I know I'm not alone in this because... And also, this is showing... No, you are alone, James. Oh, no. There's not even anyone in this room. (laughs) The indie market. The indie market for these single-player games that thrives because people just... A lot of people like this stuff, but a lot of people just want to play a good single-player campaign. And maybe there's a multiplayer stuff that you dip your toe in. That's what I want. I want a bloody story in in space and I'm wearing a cape and I've got a laser gun. Well, you should... Well, Respawn, who made Titanfall 2 and recently recently released that... um, the competitive, you know, Apex Legends, which is also an EA game, which came out a week before this. Yeah, right. For free. Uh-huh. So people are oh, playing that's that. The thing, that's the thing. People are like, what are they working on? And it's like, it's a free yeah. to play multiplayer. Whatever and it's it about, I've played a little bit of, I'm terrible. I'm like, I'm never going to get good at this. I cannot. <laughs> and that's a multiplayer. That's a massive. Yes. Multi- okay. And free. And it's not the same thing. Cause it's more, it's more your Fortnite. Everybody's in an arena and you shoot each other. Yeah. But You've basically crippled your own game. Yeah, right. that's amazing. You've released two things within two weeks. And they're the same game, essentially. Yeah, I mean, they're not the same game, but the plot of the same market is. Yeah, right. You know? Mm-hmm. So yeah. if you want to play a competitive online thing, you mm-hmm. play the free one that's good. <laughs> yes. I mean... Or I could pay... Or I could play the bad one that's expensive. Oh, yeah. See? I didn't think of There's that. There's two sides of every coin, isn't there? There is, yeah. There's two sides to every story. Yes. And that's the end of the story. That's the end of this story. Mm. But it's not the end of the letters theme. Oh, we're going to do letters. It's in fact the start of the letters theme. It currently is. The classic one was letters, oh letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. We're going to hear right now, we're going to do letters. 
They're here right now. We're going to do letters. I agree. Yes. If you want to reach the show, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter. Uh, also, weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. Shoot an air email mm. over to Mason. He'll find the, an air mail. An air mail, yeah, if you Ooh. want to do that. I'm going to look for uh, a letter right now. Do you want me to read a tweet? Please. Okay, this is from Jack ST, hashtag Scrappy Gang. Uh, All right. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. That's the, just the username. Hey guys, love the show. I was watching The Office and an idea came to mind. Would you guys like to see an office slash Parks and Rec style show set in the, in the Daily Bugle with Brian Cranston as J. Jonah Jameson? Cheers. Yes. Agreed. We did get, I mean, what did we get? What was that thing Powers. we got last? Powerless. I mean, power, Powerless. Yeah. yeah, we got that recently with Vanessa Hudgens and Alan Tudyk. Yes. Of the Tudyk, Tudyk universe, universe. Which I watched one episode of. And it so was I guess fine? It was fine. So I guess I would like to see this, but... Unless it is very readily available to me, I probably won't watch it. <laughs> yeah, which Powerless wasn't for no, us. No, I, I guess think. it wasn't, yeah, because we had to steal it off the internet or whatever. Yeah, so. whatever we did. And now it's kind of disappeared. You'd think it would be on Netflix or something at this yeah, point, but I haven't seen it yet. I don't know who made it or yeah. whatever. Yes. Uh, this is from Google, security alert. Okay. Our new device signed into uh, weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. Oh, no. From which device? A new Windows device. Is that your wife? Might have been. When was it from? <laughs> 8.30. Today? Yes. Oh, no, that was me. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, just checking. Well, that's my letter for this week. <laughs> just kidding. I'll find another one. This is from Riley Jones. It says love mail, but oh. love has an eight in it. Uh, love it. Hi, James and Meso and Charlie. He's not here this week. <laughs> you've, you've messed this up really badly. Uh, uh, right, this is from Riley Jones. He is, uh, he's a fellow Melbourneian geek. And uh, he's been writing to people I think are great lately. And so now it's your turn. Well, that's yes, very nice. Yes, about time. I know, right? Uh, it's something my lovely wife has taught me. Sadly, she's battling stage four stomach cancer. Uh, but, uh, oh, that sucks. It, yeah, I know exactly. Uh, diagnosed last year, but discovering a wonderful podcast has been great for me and the kids. So that's nice. Mm. Um, uh, in case you're wondering, I definitely played the cancer card in the previous paragraph <laughs> and hopefully it encourages you busy young men to finish my stupidly long email. Yes, it did. Very tricky and great. Thank you for calling us That's young right. men. That's right. Yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, anyway, my wife is super nice and so I took a leaf out of her book and tweeted Lexi Alexander recently to let her know I think Punisher Warzone is awesome and she retweeted it as an example of why Twitter is sometimes nice. That's great. Yeah. And that is a good movie. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. He's the best Punisher. Yeah. The main thing that encouraged me to write you is that James referred to winning movie fight regarding getting short round back for Indiana Jones 5. Gosh, I thought exactly right the same thing and wrote about it last year as well. He's got a blog. It's Rylestar, R-I-L-E-S-T-A-R dot blogspot dot com. So maybe check that out. Awesome. I'll link it below yeah. also. Yeah. That's really nice to send a nice thing. Yeah. We never get nice things, Mason. We never, but I always, th- I always <laughs> think that's a good thing to do. I always yeah. find like if you have... Often, especially with not us, but like actual artists. Yeah, real it's people who do real, real things. Real people who do real things. I find if you like if you like what somebody does, yeah. you should tell them. I agree. Yeah. You know what? We should make that a thing for people this week. Yeah. And if you should message, not us. Yeah. Message. <laughs> we know we're doing the Lord's work. Don't even worry about us. I mean, yeah. I mean, oh my God, it's the weekly planet, <laughs> yes, that's you know? That's what you mean, yes. So. Yeah, I think that's cool. I might yeah. do that as well this week. Also, sometimes like a lot of artists are like right on the, they're teetering right on the edge of like Correct, losing yeah. their minds. So just saying, hey, I think what you do is good. And a lot of the good. stuff is also because there's a thing also for reviews. More more people are inclined to write a bad review than a good review. Yeah. Because when you're good, when it's good, you're just like, yeah, it's good, and then you never kind of. Yeah. But when it's bad, you're like, I'd like to speak I'm to your tell manager. Everybody I know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think that's really great. And I positive. think it is good too. Thank maybe you, not right? even an artist. Maybe anybody you think is doing a good yeah. job. Yeah. Tell them it's a bloody. Maybe good a sandwich thing. artist. Yeah. That's right. Mm-hmm. Unless it's a subway sandwich. I had a really good one this week. I don't believe the you. The bread was so fresh. I think you must Just have... out of the oven. The guy was like, oh, this one's just come out of the oven. And it's I'm not like, even yeah. bread. It's like sawdust and water. Yeah, it's good though. No. All right. I'll take their money though. Yeah, if you would. Oh, well, that's right. They gave it all to a pedophile. Now listen, Mason. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, how about this? People yeah. should send in like the screen caps of things, nice things that they've sent to people. Yep. And maybe there'll be a prize. Oh, we'll think of something. It's... We'll get something out of the prize cabinet. Yes, don't open that door. <laughs> okay. You'll be attacked by bats and raccoons. Look, I don't want to give anything away, but James has been working on a magnum opus for a while. <laughs> his 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 particular I don't, i'm not going to tell anybody what it is sure. but it's like a video that he's been working on he's on his own personal time yep. it's something he's very passionate about and he's working on it and he's like hey check this out and he opened the cabinet <laughs> over there and he emerged with a weird rubber mask the spookiest thing you've ever it's seen very spooky thing and i'm like and he's like this is for the video and i'm like all right you've gone bad yeah good good stuff <laughs> also when that arrived i went 
this is the last thing I'm buying for this. <laughs> like, I've crossed the line here. Uh-huh. Oh, that's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. If it, Yeah, I always say that. Like, if you, because a lot of, you know, some people put out put out a lot of artistic works and great yeah. stuff and produce great things. And you'd be, be like, yeah, it's good work. Thank Absolutely. you for that. That's very nice. Yeah, that's really Here's great. another letter. This is from Scott Fleming. Do Just, it in the Great Mates group as well. Post yeah. your responses in there. I mean, that'd be yeah, cool. That's a good place to, to maybe get a thread going. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. is unrelated to anything except sure. maybe uh, Russian Doll, which is a, a recursive time loop movie. Yes, yes, uh, yes. This is from Scott Fleming, Groundhog Day fan theory. Oh, yeah. I just thought it was interesting. Uh, uh, I was watching Groundhog Day recently. I came up with a little theory about the film that may not have been said before. Uh, the theory is that every time Phil goes to sleep or he dies, he doesn't reset the day when he wakes up, but he instead shifts into a parallel dimension and keeps going through an infinite number of multiverses until he learns his lesson. My evidence for this is in the autopsy scene where we see two people examine Phil's body long after he's died. The world clearly continues after his death as opposed to just resetting or the autopsy would never happen. Therefore, I believe his mind shifts to a parallel Phil in a parallel world and the world is his just been in continues on which is actually pretty disturbing when you consider some of the things he does during the film oh my god that's great that's good isn't it right that is a fantastic that's theory. good i don't know i don't know if uh that can be definitively said yes or no because i haven't seen groundhog day in a while sure but i love the idea that there's now thousands of parallel universes <laughs> where just a, a man a, a phil has just gone on a absolute tear just he's <laughs> just gone is that his name phil connors yeah yeah he's just gonna he's just gone on a rampage yeah and Stolen the groundhog and driven off a bridge or whatever to his just punching fiery people in death. the street. Yes, and, yeah. yeah, so great. There's a sequel. There's got to be a sequel in that. Yes, like, maybe. I don't know. All the Phils team up <laughs> <laughs> to murder. No, wait. They're all dead though, aren't they? They're all dead. He's taken over their body and killed them. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Oh, you know what? It's it's the inhabitants of those towns. Mm. Attempt to track down the original Phil, whose consciousness has through been time and through space. time and space, oh, because he ruined great. their because he ruined their towns and their worlds. Wow, oh, you know, I love that. Yeah, how about this? He shifts into when he shifts into a parallel the next dimension, he leaves a black hole behind. It <laughs> <laughs> just starts destroying their world. Like there's the autopsy, and they're like, "Well, time to put this guy in the in the in the freezer," and then they open it. And there's a black hole. They're like, "Ah, it's a Langoliers situation. It's a Langoliers situation. Whenever he leaves, that universe is destroyed. So if, so it's it's all the remaining." remnants are in like apocalyptic scenarios and they're like we're going to track this down go down and kill him before he destroys the multiverse that is absolutely wonderful i love it <laughs> i'm making that a video yeah let's make a video <laughs> uh one more tweet yes from lamp monster Ooh. uh jason kirk mm-hmm. uh do you think you could physically and physical co- sorry i'll start again do you think you could defeat in physical combat the most famous person you share your first name with and who is that person oh okay so for both of us I looked up on famousbirthdays.com. Oh, wait, it's, so it's birthday. Famous names, but I went to famousbirthdays.com because it ranks them from the most popular. Oh, to I least see, right, popular. right, right, right. So for me, I've got James Charles, who's a big YouTuber. Uh, Did you J- find him? Uh, probably. Okay, give me all the names and then we'll decide. James Corden. I would kill James Corden. Yeah, you Corden. would kill James Corden, yeah. <laughs> James Franco. I think you could, I think James Corden earlier in his life. He yeah. might be able to take you, but I think he's yeah. softened up a bit. I agree. I think you could take him now that he's rich and famous. Definitely. And he's always carpool karaoke or yes. whatever. Like he'd get out of the car, he'd, he'd, get out, he'd be like, it's, uh, thanks everybody, carpool karaoke. And then he'd open the door and he'd just slam his head in the door a whole bunch of times. <laughs> is, does he do that or is that Jimmy Fallon? I can't remember. No, he does that one. Okay. Uh, James Franco. I reckon he could. Well, yeah, and I reckon I you could, could take him. Franco. I reckon you'd be Franco. You be Franco? Yeah. Mm. I He'd think a lot of these right? also... These are Hollywood types as well. Are they real yeah, fighters? That's the thing. I mean, I'm yeah. not. What am I saying? <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. He's but not also, a real man like me, but also, I think it depends on the context of the fight. Like, if they don't know they're going into a fight <laughs> and you just show up and just clock him, I think you could definitely that's beat him. That's not a fight, though. Well, that's what I'm saying, you know. Yeah. If you had to be like, listen, uh, the magic of the internet has compelled us to have a fight. Yes. Let's start the fight. Yeah. I think it might go to Franco there. Okay, fair. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I accept that. And yeah. the last one is James Dean. Well, he's dead. Yes, I win. You definitely win, yeah. Uh-huh. James Dean was a little guy, oh. but uh, he had a lot of anger and acting. Wasn't he in the movie Giant? <laughs> Pretty bloody ironic if you ask me. I agree. Uh, I got yours though. Okay. Uh, Does the other Nick Mason factor in at all? No. From didn't Pink come Floyd? Up. I could take him. I think you could. Yeah. Not if he was James Corden's age though. Nine. He's got drummers are crazy. Fit, I was going to say, yeah, 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 you're right. I still think you could beat him. Yeah, but maybe not a younger version. Uh, Nick Bean, who YouTube star? I don't know. I'll this fight is the most- Nick Bean. <laughs> Hang on, let me uh, let me look at Nick Bean. <laughs> Nick Bean, how you spell Bean? Like Mister Bean? B-A-M. He's the Mister Bean of the. 
He's the most famous. Yeah. Who is building these <laughs> rankings? There's no more famous Nick. Nick Nolte isn't more famous? <laughs> no. Wow. You, you couldn't beat Nick Nolte. I could beat Nick Nolte. Nick Nolte would crush your head with a broken bottle. Yeah, I could take Nick Bean. Yeah, you definitely could. He's got 1.3 million subscribers, but yeah. I could take him. Yeah, if it was his subscribers versus your subscribers, yes, he would win. He would win. Yeah. But it's a fight. But also, if it was our subscribers, because you feature a lot on the YouTube channel. That's true. I'd say ours, our audience, would a lot of them would be older. Yeah. So we could just beat up a bunch of children. Exactly. Uh, that's, absolutely. I'm sure Nick Bean's very nice. And Scott could get in a few. I reckon he'd be good in a scrap. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Scott uh, from NerdSync. No, Scott, um, the guy who complains about you all the time. Mr. Scumbag. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I also want Scott from NerdSync. Okay. <laughs> All right, who are, who are the other famous? Next one you've one got. Better, one better be an actual famous person because it's Nick Bean does not count as a famous person, quite frankly. Nick Crompton. Oh, of, uh, of, Jake, of, ja- of Jake Paul fame. Yeah. I can take Crompton. I'm surprised you knew that. Yeah. I, was, I knew I could, get, I could explain it to you. But no, you I can get it. him. From his famous line, I'm Nick Crompton. No, I'm not from Compton. <laughs> we yeah. know Nick Crompton. We know Nick Crompton. And is that his first name? Yes. Nick? Okay. And England is my city. Yeah. You're from England. Yeah. You know it's not a city. <laughs> yeah, you could crush him. Yeah. That's not, that's not a, mm-hmm. that's yeah. a very short fight. And the last one is Nick Jonas, who I don't think you could take. Oh, fit. Yeah, he Young. does look fit, doesn't he? Yeah, People yeah, are saying yeah. Batman. Or, or That's true, yeah. Or Dick Grayson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you could. Maybe. Mm. I wouldn't want to fight Nick Jonas. He seems nice. Seems all right, doesn't I would he? fight the other two. <laughs> that hesitation. I would clock him straight away, just out of nowhere. Uh, Nick Bean, you know? Yeah, Nick Bean. You're not a Nick Bean. Bean is not more famous than Nick Jonas. <laughs> you're, not a, you're not a beaner? I'm not a beaner. <laughs> You're right. Nick Bean is probably not more famous than Nick Jonas. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It took, yeah, there was a lot. Like, looking at yours, I'm like, there's a lot of YouTube people on this. But, there's, you know, a lot of YouTube people are technically more famous than famous people. I guess people, that's probably you know? true, yeah. People probably know more who PewDiePie is than Brad Pitt, I'd imagine. That's now. true. I mean, I guess, yeah. and also, like, Brad Pitt, you kind of have to, you kind of have to be searching for Brad. Like, if you're a person who's on the internet, you yeah. have to look for Brad Pitt to find Brad Pitt news. But, like... It, and who's his brother? You look it up. Exactly. You look it up. Exactly. Mm, yeah. But yeah, you're right. PewDiePie or whatever is just like... It's just you turn on YouTube and he's in your face. Yeah. I read a really good tweet the other day that was, everything I know about the Kardashians was forced upon me. Yeah, right. Exactly. Which is very true for a lot of things. It's mm. like I didn't... I wasn't looking for this, but I know it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Anyway, that's the show, Mason. What a show! If you've made it this far, this probably wasn't forced upon you. No. <laughs> or it is in the... In your- yeah. Your captor is slowly a, undoing your bounds. Yeah, or you're a long suffering partner. <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> Somebody no, we to can go show. to bed. We can go to bed in a second. They're going to wrap it up. Oh, wait, they're doing hate mail. That's an extra segment. Oh, no, no. They'll do that and then they'll do. Oh, yep. This got. Oh, oh they're going to crack the two hour mark. Oh, with Mace this one. Only, oh, Mace only does one letter normally, but he's found a second one. <laughs> That's a shame. Oh, keep it going. Now they're just going on and on and on. <laughs> <laughs> there's no, there's not even any point to this. But as soon as they're done, we'll go to bed. Definitely. Don't even worry about yeah. it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, thanks everybody for listening, including long-suffering partners. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely, we do. Yeah, just if you're a long-suffering partner, just uh, let you let your partner give us a five-star review and tell their friends. And yes. Tell your friends as well. Absolutely. You if should. you wouldn't mind, we'd bloody appreciate it. Give us a nice review. We definitely would. Oh, that'd be so good. We would love it. It'd be the greatest day of us for it'd us. It'd be the greatest day of us and for us. Yes. Yeah. It's late. It's late and hot in it's here. Late and hot. It's, as it is let, now. After this, day. we'll go outside where it'll be less hot and less late. Punch a dart. Yeah, let's punch some darts. <laughs> anyway, thanks for uh, doing all that listening. We appreciate it. Yes. Uh, if you want to contact the show, you can go to Weekly Planet Pod at Gmail or Facebook or Twitter or Bandcamp. You can also go to the Planet Board Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. Agreed. Join the conversation. We're up there. Yes. Say that. Put put up, put up that. Say a nice thing about somebody. Put it in the put in the group, like we said. Absolutely, that'd be great. Yes. Uh, you can also go to planetbroadcasting dot com. You can listen to all the other podcasts on the brand, Planet Broadcasting Network. I'm going to name a few: Serious Issues, Comic Books, Yes, Two in the Think Tank, Insane Sketch Ideas Every Week. Agreed. Bloody Batch Bitch. They're talking about The Bachelor, but they're talking about so much more oh, things. Yeah. Uh, book cheat. Primates. I was an episode of Primates this that. week. Yeah, I forgot. I mentioned that earlier. Uh, with um, uh, Matt Stewart and Cass Page from Sands Pants. We yes. talked about the Umbrella Academy. Very we good. Very, very deep, deep detail. A lot of spoilers. Really got right into it. It was a very fun episode. I had a good time. Deep dive, deep chimps, right? Deep dive, deep chimps. That's, that's, that's their slogan, and they. They stick to it they always. They stick to it, exactly yeah. right. It was a good episode. 
Uh, you can do that. You can also sign up to our newsletter from the great man Rob Collins. Yeah, he's doing it. You can follow him on Twitter. He's at the Weekly Planet, yes. and also at Raw Collins, I think. Correct. Yeah. Got some Captain Marvel stuff came out this week. A couple of Caravan of Garbages. That's right. An X Men animated one, which is up by now, and something else, which will yeah. be up soon. Also Easter egg videos and other stuff. Yeah. Uh, and next week will be Captain Marvel. If you got thoughts, oh, I'm so excited. Send them on. I don't know where I'm at with it. Well, we'll know afterwards. Yeah, we? absolutely, we yeah. will. I'm not not excited. <laughs> yes, but. I'll see it. I'll also see it. Yeah, let's, yeah. Let's, let's pledge right now to both see it. Agreed. Uh, I'm uh, at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter, nice. and I'm also N I C K M A S E A U on Instagram. The most famous Nick Mason on Instagram. That's correct, except for the other ones. Yes. Uh, and you're Mr. Uh, Sunday Movies. All the platforms. And all the things. Everything you've uh, seen. Let's see, we've got some teas on tpublic.com. Grab yourself a Weekly Planet yep. t shirt. Thank you to The Brute and The Basilisk and Arrakam for all our musical themes. Correct, correct. Thanks, everybody, who emails in. I appreciate that. Nicki Minaj is the most famous Nick. Doesn't count, I don't think. I think it does. Matter. Also, she could definitely take me in a fight. 100% she would. Yeah. Mm. Run me over in a Lamborghini. Yes. I wouldn't even mind. <laughs> and that's the show? That is the show, I think, yeah. All right, we will see you next week. Captain Marvel stuff next week. Please. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you then. Have fun. This is it. Nice. Goodbye. <laughs> that's good stuff. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want, it's up to you.